Okay, well, welcome everyone. Um, we're gonna call the meeting to order. Uh, so the first thing is to review and approve the agenda, and uh, at least uh, relative to what the agenda says online, there are a couple of changes. Um, one is that it doesn't list general business and appearances, and we're going to definitely add that. Um, so, and thing number two is that there is a, an, oh, should I, sh mm, should I keep talking? How, how are we doing? Oh, okay. Well, I, have, I could, I could just, I could use my teacher voice. I don't think you want that in the mic though. <laughs> Uh. Well, I almost got it done this way. Fascinating. We have EMTs here, something happened. <laughs> <laughs> gonna, we're going to give it a minute to see if this works out. It's funny because it's called that thing anyway. I know. Oh, okay. Hey there. Can you, is that any better? No? Not any better? I feel like I can hear a little bit of, uh, no? Not yet? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm going to keep talking as if there's, um, you know, something is going to change with the volume. Yes, I, I could do that also. Okay. Well, um, we're going to keep moving forward. Uh, okay, so we're adding general business and appearances, and the second thing that we're going to add after that is uh, there's a grant application uh, that we got an email about this afternoon, and so we'll take that up immediately after before, uh, or after the general business and appearances and before the budget. And just to explain the budget process team, just so you know, I mean, I guess I could save this for that conversation, but uh, I'm thinking about the budget as being in three parts, uh, and you could think of it as like uh, the... Uh, just like the layout that we were given, uh, there's sort of the core uh, budget, there were the things that are recommended in the budget that was in that green section that are um, some additions or changes, and then there's the, the last section um, that are things that, uh, that, that was the yellow section and, and we'll take that up last. Okay, so. Uh, we're oh, planning to yep. do that down there. Yeah, so when we get to that part, we'll move to the center table. And we're going to use the whiteboard, and I'm really excited about it. Um, okay. So, uh, on, uh, so without any objection, we'll consider the agenda approved. Uh, all right. So, general business and appearances. This is a time for any member of the public to address the council on any uh, issue that is otherwise not on our agenda. And if you would keep your comments to two minutes or so. And tell us who you are, <laughs> even though we know who you are. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Uh, I'm Andrea Stander. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor and members of the council and members of the city staff. I um, appreciate the opportunity to speak to you just for a few minutes tonight. Um, I, as I said, my name is Andrea Stander. I live on uh, 25 Liberty Street. And um, I'm here this evening to speak on behalf of a group of Montpelier registered voters who continue to have significant concerns about the proposed parking garage. Um, in pursuit of those concerns, we are availing ourselves of our public democratic process and seeking to place an article on the ballot for the March 5th, 2019 town meeting election. Um, we recognize the concerns of many citizens and especially our downtown merchants and businesses regarding issues with parking in Montpelier. Our goal is to seek the best possible future for the city. Um, and therefore, we're presenting the content of our petition to you tonight to facilitate dialogue and encourage a spirit of civic engagement. Um, we've begun collecting signatures and we intend to present the requisite number of valid signatures by the deadline of Thursday, January 24th, 2019 at 5 o'clock. Um, and then I, if I may, I'd like to just read you the contents of the petition. Uh, we, the undersigned legal voters of the City of Montpelier, Vermont, hereby petition the Montpelier City Council to place the following article on the warning for the annual town meeting to be held on the first Tuesday of March, Tuesday, March 5th, 2019. This petition is filed pursuant to the Montpelier City Charter. We certify that we are presently voters of this city. The article to be placed on the warning to read as follows. Shall the City Council withhold spending of the $10.5 million as authorized in Article 1 of the November 6, 2018 official ballot until the following shall occur. Number one, 
that for the benefit of the downtown merchants and other businesses, there is a written commitment by the city to provide sufficient remote parking spaces and transportation services to the downtown during the construction phase. And I have copies of this, I'll give it to everybody. That it is, number two, that it is clearly shown that there will be safe, continuous public sidewalks and bike lanes along the road leading to and from the entrance of the garage from State Street. That the comprehensive traffic study required by the Development Review Board in its December 13th, 2018 decision is completed immediately, not one year later. That soil remediation on the site is completed and the findings and cost of this work be made public. That the bid process is completed with the costs of the successful bid being within the bond limits. That all state and municipal permits and sub-permits, including water quality permits if required, have been issued and any appeals resolved. That a public report projecting operating costs and revenues over the expected life of the garage, including pay down of the bond, is completed by an independent accountant who has experience in public parking garage operations. And I'll be happy to pass these around. So as I said, our intention tonight was simply to put this on your radar, um, let you know what we're doing, um, and go forward. Thank you, Andrea. You're welcome. Um, may, I, may I ask yeah, one, go, one go ahead. technical question? Mm -hmm. um, the, um, number three about the traffic study, that it be done now instead of a year from now. Mm -hmm. the, I think the goal of the year from now is to see the before and after. I we so understand that so from I don't the know the DRB decision, but I think there are concerns. So I was just, just curious what the yeah. rationale was no, for the doing concerns it now because there will be no additional traffic or no change to measure. So right. I, I'm not the expert to that. speak to this, but I think okay. our concern has to do with inadequate information about the current situation and how things are going to proceed. And I would just also love to add that uh, I, I would love to meet with any of the you know mm -hmm. folks in your group who are uh, concerned in in a in the spirit of like, you know, what can we what can we be doing? You know, how can we be addressing these uh, these uh, concerns? Mm -hmm. I mean, I appreciate that you've uh, have an itemized list like that. This is actually very helpful. So, thank you. I just have a quick procedural question. I think this is probably more for Bill. Um, so, if the requisite number of signatures are secured, then the petition comes to the council. And is it an automatic addition if the requisite number of signatures are added? Because that was my understanding. I think so, although okay. the, although the, um, there, we'd have to look at what, there are certain things the voters can and can't do. Mm -hmm. So I don't, to what, if there are those, and I don't know, I'm not in a position to opine on any of these, I just saw them. But if so, if there were things that were not within the purview of the voters, whether I guess it might have to be considered advisory or something like that. So we, we'll get legal opinion on this. Okay. But I pre uh, my short-term presumption is that would have to go in the ballot. Okay. Without and that would all, all of that would be contained in the charter if that provision existed, or is that contained elsewhere? Well, for, uh, well, I, I don't, I'll get into for instance, but there are certain things that you know, voters can appropriate money, they can do certain things. There are certain specific administrative things that voters can't do, and so um, so you can have them on the ballot, but it doesn't mean that the city council has to follow them. So, um, so okay, so I guess so maybe that be clarifies. So either way, it's going to go on the ballot. Yeah. Presumably. But yes. the question then becomes which is How binding is it? Right, okay. And, okay. What, and to what extent is it binding? We can find that out. Right. I'll do the county is looking at the actual petition right now. Oh. My understanding is that it wouldn't be binding. My understanding is that it would not be binding, mm -hmm. and as such, it only needs the 300 and some signatures. But since it's not a moneyed item, um, it's not going to be binding. And it also there's also the question, honestly, because it reads as a rescission. Mm -hmm. um, so it, you know, it. I think we need to wait wait for what Paul says to see if it's even can be on the ballot, but if it can, then um, oh. all it takes, it does not take approval from the council at all, the way our charter I, I, is worded. I, I believe the wording that we've chosen on our petition is not a rescission. It's simply a list of things that we feel need to happen. 
but it, or the money. Yeah. Well, spent. the reason I asked Paul to look at it is, is, it's, is it basically says we won't do what we voted on until these other conditions are met, and he might consider that a rescission. I just need to wait to hear from him. Okay. Regardless of right. whether it's binding or whether it's a rescission, I, I, and I, I presume it would be on the ballot. I yeah. can't imagine why well, it wouldn't be. But so, but, be but regardless of all that, I, I would still like to... Um, and our, our goal, any or, uh, we're using this yeah. process because we think it's a good process yeah. Yeah. for educating people, engaging people in a dialogue and a discussion about these concerns. Yeah. Um, so that's our purpose. Great. Thank you for the time. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, Jeff. Extra copies in case. There, there were a bunch, yeah. And, and to answer uh, the question, in addition to what's in the, uh, in the charter, there is... Uh, a fair amount of uh, Vermont case law on uh, the ability of uh, residents to petition for things to be on the ballot and what the effect of those is that uh, I had to work on in, in a previous ballot initiative 25 or so years ago. So, <laughs> so there's, there's case law out fair there enough. that we can find this out. I also just want to make sure that we are very public about this because I think, I mean, everybody knows where I stand on the parking garage anyway, yes. but I just want to make sure that that w when we get sort of like, if we can put together a document that has all of the, the legal references for the public to read as well, because what I don't want to do is set expectations that, um, that, that the council doesn't intend, you know, but I, I just want to be fully transparent in, in what the council is going to do. I think everybody knows what I would say, but <laughs> um, I just want to make sure that everyone has access to the legal authority and what that all means so that people know, like, what this translates to, like, <coughs> pragmatically speaking, in their day-to-day -day life as residents here. Okay. Great. Yeah, and you look at these. I mean, we, we couldn't start without permits anyway, for example, number six, so that goes without saying. Um, well, number five, the same thing. Um, well, let's. So let's I'm just saying, because a lot of these are things that you have to do anyway. We have, well, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Yes. And it's not that we're not interested. No, I, I hear you. <laughs> I, this is actually incredibly helpful. We're just hungry. <laughs> Fair. Okay. So, um, all right. So moving on to um, the uh, grants application um, just got sent around this afternoon uh, theoretically this could be a consent agenda item but it's only one item so is any yeah, this is, do you uh, want to tell us anything so about this it? is a uh, pollution control grant um, that's we're applying for through the state of Vermont and Department of Environmental Conservation um, we, it's nothing we've been awarded yet. This is part of the application process, but it does require city council to authorize us to submit the application and to name me as authorized representative for interactions with them uh, in the event that we succeed in that application. So this, all the money, if we were to receive anything under this grant, would be used towards the wastewater uh, recovery facility project to reduce the total cost from that $16.75 million. So. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, all right, any discussion about this? Anyone I move make? we approve it. Fantastic. Uh, second. Uh, for further discussion? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, great. All right, so on to the budget. So uh, let's take a moment to transition ourselves to down at the table, and uh, we'll pick it up from there. By saying that, you mean you want us all to physically move to the table? Yes, we're all physically going to move down there. <laughs> Connor, you want to bring those peanut butter cups? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think that's why it didn't sink into me Make that, sure like, everybody. yeah, because it's down there. That's right. Just out of my normal range of like.
No, I don't want to move back. <laughs> no, it's not that hard. You think we should move back? Why? Oh, because we're going to have a good couple of presentations. But there was right there, right? Well, this is, mine wasn't really a presentation, it was just so we could have, um, keep the running tally and everyone could see it. What do you think, team? Should we? I think stay. I like stay. it. I want to be here. Doug, Doug, okay. Doug in. Um, and I, I can come and go as yeah. department heads. Okay. Move in. Uh, That's nice. Okay, so um, first of all, can can you all hear us okay? Not very well. Yeah. Spread them out. Yeah. We have more than two. We're going to use those later. But if we put there should be three, you said? Yeah. Oh, there's only two. I see two. two. Oh, one's on the floor. <laughs> Here. Here we go. Okay. Hello. Check, check. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, so uh, I think we wanted to start things out with um, just hearing a little bit from a couple department heads. So um, I, I know Tony is here, and I don't see Jeff. Um, oh, Alex but Alex is here. Yeah. Okay. Great. Jeff is coming. Jeff is coming. Well, we'll at least go with, uh, so can we invite Tony up? Hey, Tony, are you ready? Did you want to plug in? Are you? Yeah, if you don't mind. Oh, it's so weird to be down here. <laughs> I like that. Well, we'll make it work. Oh, you brought your own laptop? Yeah. Want me to do that? Want me to shut you want to do that? Well, either that or just, can you just add it to this? Can you just put it on this flash drive? Yeah. And then we can just stick it in? You might sign to this one. Yes. For the flaps. Well, you and I are signing it together. Then we don't have to set up another. Sorry, I was going to say, I don't recognize you. Who is this clean shaven man? Wow. We've got some that? scary that? pictures of the past. I, I, yeah. I take exactly. it you had a full beard. Yeah, a very full beard. <laughs> the chief will introduce Sergeant Cocker, but he was undercover for five years. So I'm not recognizing him. <laughs> First, it took me a second to realize who this was. That's how I saw you. Two earrings and yeah. long hair. She said I couldn't come back until they were healed. They're not healed. The brother said I turned it all wrong. I'm back. It doesn't surprise me. It's coming from him. Our number one rule is we always make sure our tech works, but yeah. obviously we didn't follow that. <laughs> That's good. That okay. Rules That's are like basically made to be broken. Says the prosecutor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that as a writer of rules. <laughs> yeah, right. Seems like gonna, lately there are more exceptions than rules. I was going to say, I watched Rosie viscerally. <laughs> I'm a rule follower. <laughs> Should we uh, take a three-minute break? That's a great idea. Okay. Go. Let's take let's take three minutes. I'm gonna open my candy bar. Take a well, peanut butter <laughs> cup. So you don't feel obligated to <laughs> hang out. So right here. Okay. Go ahead. Take so, it away. Well, thank you and good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to reintroduce uh, Detective Sergeant Wade Cochran, the Montpelier Police Department. Wade has been. Uh, covertly assigned uh, to the Vermont Drug Task Force the past five years. Today is day one. I didn't recognize me. Walked in without uh, the beard and everything else and, and some other uh, jewelry, I think. Um, so, uh, but as you'll see, this is this is a very important um, calculated uh, plan that we have had for some time as we reintegrate. Um, you know, the loss of this of having somebody assigned to the Vermont Drug Task Force but the restructuring of our investigative division based on what we are currently facing. So it's, uh, it's to support patrol to get back to what we also, what's made us, uh, I think, so um, effective in our community. And, and we want to we wanna do it all because the community is asking us to do it all. And um, so this is only, this should be, we'll go as quickly as, uh, as you folks wish. So 
So volume, first, is the volume okay for people? So first of all, you know, I, we, we used to, you know, the additional police officer, um, and, uh, and quite frankly, I'm simply trying to get us back to uh, our original authorized strength that um, we did have back when I first took over as police chief in 2007, and that was uh, uh, getting us up to 17 officers. Um, several years ago, there, there was uh, um, some serious budget challenges in the city, and there were cuts made to several departments, the fire department and the police department um, back then. So for the last five years, technically, uh, Sergeant Cochran has been uh, the 17th officer, if you will, but he's been off the books because of how, how we were doing that. But nonetheless, um, we are you know, more challenged than ever before with the expectations of the community, um, you know, the needs, and uh, again, protests, special events. Um, most of this you've, you've heard me discuss in, in the past. Uh, mental health, I mean, the job is just getting more complicated, and yet public expectation, expectations are essentially, you know, they, they expect perfection um, within reason. Uh, so right now, we're, we're, for a variety of reasons, we are uh, short-staffed, and it's having, you know, it's having some serious challenges. Um, you know, we've got, matter of fact, uh, one of our officers, he's in the room in the back there, we're 500 hours of overtime, another sergeant with 400 plus hours of overtime. This is simply too much, and, it, and it's coming at a great cost. It comes at a cost of the, the efficiencies of the officer and their performance, as well as their personal lives are greatly impacted. Uh, and, and also, um, we're concerned, you know, with the agency, how we connect with the community. Things that, um, you know, when Mike Philbrook, uh, who's here you know, many years ago, he said, hey, let's do coffee with the cop. You know, great successful program that really allowed us to, to have those non-adversarial one-to-one with the public. Uh, talk about anything. Very similar to, you know, coffee and Begitos. Um, and Begitos was one of our places that we've done coffee with the cop. But bike patrol, uh, things that are, are very effective um, programs that, to help us connect, we just haven't been able to do. So I think, I think it's been noticed um, that the frequency that whether you've seen bike patrol or foot patrol or these coffee with the, coffee with the cop type events, um, how important they are to how we feel to us and to the community. Um, so, and uh, this, this all relates to, uh, when, you know, to how are we reactive versus being proactive. And right now we are, um, going to be faced with some serious challenges on the reactive side. This is the proposed org chart uh, of what 17 officers would look like. And as you'll see down below, one of the, the, the key reorganizations on the left side, bottom left, is a detective position that's to be determined. So one of, one of the uh, individuals from the, uh, on the patrol side of the house, if you will, will, will be assigned a position for a period of up to uh, a couple of years, uh, maybe three three years, I, I think is where we we're talking. But it, it's a union union assignment where that officer would become would be a detective and would gain very valuable experience in in financial crime, you know, evidence processing more so than what everybody is already able to do so right now. Um, and also, we thought it was important to have the. Uh, right now, our SRO, which is um, Matt Nisley, he's also uh, assigned to the special investigation. So he's doing the, a lot of the sex crimes, the child sexual assault cases, and we really felt that that should fall under the, you know, the umbrella of a detective supervisor, uh, as well as having that continuity of making sure that sometimes because because you know children, you know, youthful offenders as well as victims, there are different needs and things that we have to make sure that we, we have in place. Um, so that's, that's what 17 officers, counting myself, look, would look like, um, you know, with, with, with that. Can I ask you a question? Oh, so, sure. So this will, that w it would help with the four to 500 uh, hours of overtime, you know, per yeah. um, person, yes. one say. Because right now, in, as we, the next slide is the schedule, and we've got a couple of officers that are, are out, um, you know, on, on admin leave, another one on, on medical leave, and the officer on medical leave, uh, he's been out since September, and we, it's, uh, we don't expect him back for about another three months, and the other officer is on administrative leave. Um, and so whenever we have these, these uh, you know, these shortages, um, it's hard, how do we absorb that? So this, if you look at, so looking above, you'll see that the schedule, 
with the exception of like the captain um, and myself, I, I don't even appear on the schedule. Um, but we try to work a four on, three off schedule. And so that's how, I, so it's not like, we, even though we say we have 16 officers, it doesn't mean that, uh, you know, you pick up the phone, there's 16 officers available to, to come to respond, whether it's uh, speed enforcement on your street or whether, um, you know, we need to process a, uh, a crime scene of, you know, low, of, um, you know on a, uh, um, like a property crime. So again, there's vacation time, comp time, training, all of this factors in. Um, to how we manage over time and really provide, put our best foot forward to keeping the public safe. So, again, for the last five years, uh, we've assigned Sergeant Cochran to the Drug Task Force. And during that time, what we did um, was a unique opportunity because normally you don't send an experienced sergeant to the Drug Task Force. Uh, Wade had already gone through command school at Roger Williams. Uh, he'd already gone through the DEA basic training uh, as, as well as he's one of our uh, was an instructor in tactics for us. Um, and so, but with the help of uh, actually um, Bill Jennings uh, was willing to come back and help us out. He was no longer uh, unfortunately with us. Uh, he passed a few weeks ago. Um, and an, an arrangement with the Vermont State Police, we really made a, a successful this really worked, and it paid off huge dividends to Montpelier, and I th and uh, it's 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 almost impossible to say how much impact this partnership and having the drug task force resources, you know, really focused in the Central Mont area, but that great force multiplier, how much of does that play into our three straight years of significant crime reduction? Um, you know, when we think about you know Sir Robert Peel's nine principles of policing, which is pretty much, uh, which goes way back before President Obama's task force on 21st century policing, but, but it's pretty much the same thing, but, you know, the, uh, the ninth, ninth pr principle is effective policing is really, um, one of the reflections of that is going to be, is there a crime reduction, and is crime is under control? So I think it's been greatly successful by having the, this, this effort here. Um, and again, uh, we've had done even more with our federal partners. Um, you know, here locally. This is just an example. Um, Wade was case agent on this, this case. It's still ongoing. It was in Western Massachusetts. But what you're looking at right there, that's 10,000 bags of fentanyl. Um, and Wade, and uh, there was just that night alone, um, you know, there was a 15,000 bags were recovered in Western Massachusetts. That was all fentanyl that was headed towards Central Vermont. Uh, I put, point this out because um, yeah, I'm a mother. Yeah, we joke about it. But I'm a mother hen a little bit. Um, you know, even though he's uh, with a highly capable team of, of agents and troopers, um, you know, I know when he's out of state. I, you know, we just want to, you know, and just kind of let me know how's it going. When are you back home? Kind of thing. Um, but this is just this is a side that of of the opiate problem um, from you know from what law enforcement's resp primary responsibility is, and that is the you know the intervention and interdiction of, of drugs. The only correction is the season mother had a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you know, it's a, uh, I, so. <laughs> the, um, and, and the other thing that's important as far as how this relates to, you know, making sure that hopefully we at least get to getting back to 17 officers here in Montpelier working out of the, out of the police department. Um, there's a lot of things that are, in, you know, in flux. Um, and right now there's still an ongoing debate between the state of Vermont and the Department of Justice regarding the sanctuary jurisdiction, if you will, of Vermont. And even though there was bipartisan support of a bill that uh, Senator Scott signed in, into law March of um, 2017, it was Act 79, it was basically said that Vermont, first of all, we will comply with uh, 1373 and other federal regulations that's required to. And at the same time, we're not, we're not, we have no authority to you know, participate in civil immigration <coughs> issues. Uh, we made that point very clear, um, and it's a, kind of a no-brainer. Vermont <coughs> is one of many states that are in this boat. Um, so I believe seven states have filed suit against the federal government. Vermont has not done that. But anyway, um, federal funding for FY18 and 19 is being withheld, and that is the funding that would support the Vermont Drug Task Force, which is not that big to begin with. Um, so, and 
for the past five years, we were picking up approximately $130,000 in grant funding to cover all of uh, Sergeant Cochran's pay and benefits. Um, so with that shift, like Montpelier and Berry City, um, it's now up to us to pick up the slack, if you will. And for the record, Berry City, um, I talked to Chief Bombier a couple weeks ago, they are, their strength, they have 20 full-time police officers. So as we compare, you know, kind of our neighboring communities, and also because of some of the, the recent, you know, shifts and challenges at the local level, um, they've also stood up a uh, street crimes unit, something that not, we're not proposing at all that we would need to do that, but we would certainly support and participate with that model as needed, uh, as well as all the other still ongoing ops that we may have with our federal partners. Um, yes. Sorry, street crimes are like mugging or? It could be, yeah, primarily it's going to be violence around drug trafficking, okay. including drug trafficking. Uh, you know, if you can jump on it quickly with detectives, you can do, uh, you know, warrant process, uh, evidence um, processing, the, you know, interviewing individuals that may be willing to cooperate with you in the moment, um, to even um, where there's a, a certain small level tactical operation may need to happen very quickly quicker search warrant executions too and stuff like that so it's not necessarily there's not there's less time between when the warrant is issued and when it's executed yeah. which means less time to move yeah. and, and this concept is very much supported by um, state attorney Corey Tebow so this is what we're up against uh, drug trafficking fentanyl exposure even uh, to our firefighters and police officers dealing with this on a regular basis now illegal firearms you know it's the currency of the drug trade um, our officers this, this past year uh, have been involved with several uh, interventions with deployment of Narcan along with our fire department. Um, been approximately well, over 50 over ODs and just very much put your loan for 2018. Many of those have been fatal. Uh, so again, we, we know the threat, we know the problem, you know, both in here in Vermont as well as nationally, but it's not all doom and gloom also because there, uh, for example, we have, as, as I think this council knows, we have capacity for treatment. Um, this, this year, I, the, our department, uh, through my involvement, we are now uh, part of the Washington County Substance Abuse Regional Partnership. So that is basically all the medical folks and the treatment and prevention folks, and Chief Bombardier is there as well. Um, that's something that I will be uh, passing the torch on to now that he's back in the, the, the PD here, uh, will be Sergeant Cochran's duty. Because it's important to see, like, you know, one of the things, for example, what's the impact of what we're doing on the street and, and how to what's happening on the treatment and the medical side. <coughs> and, and addiction, as we know, is also directly related to our, our burglary and other, uh, other crime here in Uh Several years ago, this um, an organized crime drug enforcement task force concept was pitched by ATF but uh, at, a, at a meeting that is actually at Montpelier Police Department when it was um, pitched to Department of Justice officials. What an organized crime drug enforcement task force does, it's through the U.S. Attorney's Office as a, as a you know, a, as a, ultimately it's from the Attorney General. It's special funding sources for dedicated, um, complex, you know, violent crime and drug trafficking. Um, this screenshot was at a private ceremony at the ATF office recognizing um, the core team members in the summer. So as you'll see there, you'll see Montpelier PD, FBI, Vermont State Police, South Burlington and Barry City PD along with ATF and DEA. This was the core team but was also supported by Customs of Border Protection including aerial assets, the helicopter. Um, U.S. Marshal Service played a significant role and, and again uh, amazing cooperation from U.S. Attorney Christina Nolan's office to um, T Attorney General Donovan's office and to Rory Tebow's office. I mean this is and this is how we've been able to do a lot of things without it impacting what you see every day. Um, so this one operation, Operation Hydra, which we can now talk about, um, it's uh, what it is. So we had two officers, two detectives, uh, Sergeant Cochran being one of them, as well as uh, former detective uh, Steve Nolan, who retired back at, uh, this fall, were assigned to Operation Hydra, as well as most of the department at some point had, has cycled through with various phases of the operation. If you recall, in June, there was a significant uh, sweep of over, I think, 20, Five twenty-six um, defendants were, were rounded up, um, and uh, over a couple, you know, two days. So again, we spent a lot of time um, supporting that. To and then, uh, as a result of this two-year operation, seventy-one illegal firearms, uh, and 
uh, there were some real high risk raids. I mean, I, I cannot, you know, stress enough the the hazards and dangers that that our teams were up against. Um, things that just uh, um, heavily bothered. Um, you know, when we didn't have an armored vehicle available, things like that. Um, and where we, even though we had uh, multiple agencies, uh, federal mostly, um, and our folks, um, it was just, you know, just not the time to be insufficient resources for what we're up against. So, this is the, uh, the core team. Um, of those in the picture, you have three of those are from Montpelier PD. This is in Burlington, Vermont. So this is just on the table, um, 71 firearms that over the course of the two-year period of Operation Hydra were seized in the Barry Montpelier area. Most of these firearms were stolen, others were involved in straw purchases, others had obliterated serial numbers, other firearms um, were either in possession of somebody that was a prohibited offender. Um, and, but this is, this is, you know, what I don't think people fully understand or appreciate what this department and all of our partners have, are involved in on a you know, semi-regular basis, too, with too much frequency, on trying to keep our community healthy. <laughs> And with that, do you have anything else you'd like to add from the Drug Task Force pers your perspective? Sure. Just a couple things. Um, I had the luxury of going to agency, different agencies throughout the state, being with the task force. I might be in Brattleboro one day and then St. Albans the next day. And everybody that I worked with, oh, you're from Montpelier PD. Uh, that, that's a really great agency. Montpelier, so it was great to hear, for one thing. So I just wanted to add that. The other thing is, um, one of the things, that I've been able to do is meet with addicts and work with addicts every day. That was kind of my life for five years. Um, some of those addicts lived right here in Montpelier. Um, one of the car stops that I can talk about that was Intel based, we got almost 2,000 bags of heroin from this person that was directly being dealt from George Street in Montpelier. Um, it's coming in constantly and I'm not just saying it's all drugs because it's not and that's not what the detectives are going to do but with the drugs property crimes um, whoop, I'm sorry <laughs> with the drugs there's property crimes and one of the things that I've talked to with some of my helpers is with your CIs is uh, I'll ask them what's your habit and they'll tell me you know three two hundred three hundred bags of heroin so well how do you afford that well how do you think we afford that they steal they break into places so if we can combat this issue and or this problem it would i think it would benefit montpelier i know i think we have an aggressive plan that we can do if we can build this detective agency or the detective um section section and and i think it'll be yeah i think it'll be good for montpelier Uh, we probably don't have time, so I'm not going to even bore you that, but this clip, if, if you look at, you know, um, it's, it's Celine MacArthur from Channel 3 News did a series called The Fix. Um, I highly recommend um, looking at this. This one particular episode, it's just shy of five minutes, but it was, it was shot with, matter of fact, um, you know, Sergeant Cochran's supervisor of the drug task force is there, but many of the, um, it shows even uh, somebody, an assault that was captured during a drug, drug deal with, a, with an informant. Um, where the person is, you know, um, I remember responding to that call, you know, where it basically had his head caved in from being kicked. And you digitize and you see that. That was, that was at the Econo Lodge in Montpelier, Vermont. So, I mean, I, I just need to impress upon you, not to scare you, because crime is still a very safe community. And I probably should have started with that, I need to end with that. Um, but nonetheless, um, there isn't a magical agency that just handles all this behind the scenes. Um, and it is, and everybody has a vital role from, you know, the rookie patrol officer um, to the seasoned veterans that are our negotiators, our negotiators, our school resource officers, or, or, you know, just, um, we, we just make it work. And uh, so, last slide, but um, do you have to consider is that, you know, and I, I certainly am concerned, my player is, is, is growing in certain ways, and we need to make sure that we have a police department that is not taxed and that we can keep pace um, with the needs of this community. Um, and I just had, happened to have a conversation with uh, State's Attorney uh, Tebow this afternoon, I told him about this presentation. He said, hey, we want to make sure I put the quote in, so I did. <laughs> he said, uh, MPD is a professional, proficient police department. 
um, but he certainly, again, echoed um, there's real challenges on the horizon and we need to be um, at full strength to, to, to deal with that. And then lastly, um, I think it's important that we have sufficient um, you know, resources so when we prepare at the end of this upcoming fiscal year for my departure and then a few months later Captain Martel's, um, I want to make sure that we have our best foot forward um, so you know, when that next chief comes in with his or her vision and, and uh, priorities, you know, that they'll be at full staff to just you know, hit the ground running. So that is, um, I know it's a lot of information. I didn't mean to make it too heavy on the whole drug side, but we can't ignore um, this. And I know this is also something that, uh, you know, again, we had to clear it with, you know, with ATF to show those pictures and talk about it. Um, I had a conversation a couple weeks ago with Christina Nolan, our U.S. attorney. Uh, she presented Operation Hydra at a, at a conference with U.S. attorneys um, in the Midwest you know, recently, too, because it just shows, uh, and again, and, and, uh, and she even acknowledged that this was, you know, this, this concept was pitched and hatched at Montpelier PD, the Department of Justice. So with that, that's um, kind of an explanation and some background for you folks as to why we are trying to get back to 17 police officers. Thank you. Um, questions or comments? So this is, this is like stuff that I know lots of things about. So one of the things um, up there, so you had your schedule listed, um, but does that cover, like if, if for an example an officer is subpoenaed or, um, you know, uh, requested for a deposition or something on their off hours, how, how does that sort of factor in to? If it's on their day off or if they're an evening officer, then it's overtime and the, for contractual rate, if it's not, you know, either coming in early on their shift or the tail end of their shift, it's a four-hour overtime minimum that they have. And um, in terms of, so, search warrant stuff that happens after shift, which is there, there's mm -hmm. a significant amount of that, um, how, how does that work? Like, is that, there are they compensated for that or are they just taking their own time because it's just easier to do it that way or? No, they are always compensated and, um, it's, it's, uh, you know, when, when, like, for example, the drug work, when, they, when these things happen, sometimes I'll get a call from either, you know, Sergeant Cochran or ATF um, saying, this is what we've got, we need what, you know, we need certain people because of whether it's their background, their, you know, whether it's their experience. Then we have to go and we have to manage, too, who's still on shift to cover, you know, anything that may happen in my failure. Um, and, uh, you know, Bill and I have talked and, you know, I know he's not a big fan of it, but I have participated in many of these ops directly myself. Um, and uh, because it's just of uh, my long history of working with these folks. And how much control do you as a department have over, for example, like coming in to, to get a search warrant signed or how, how much of that, I guess what I'm getting at is like, are you telling officers, you know, uh, you know, do it this day at this time or is it sort of, are you at the whim of other entities in terms of? It, it both, for example, if, if, you know, if a car is seized and someone's incarcerated, um, you know, it doesn't have to be done right then and there. There's an opportunity. Um, but also, we cannot just like hold something forever. You know, there's there's a certain legal requirement um, where we you know we may have to execute a search warrant. If it's something such as you know related to um, timeliness of evidence potentially being lost or destroyed, then you know whatever may be needed has to happen very quickly. The other thing along those lines, though, has been so frustrating to me is the complete disregard that protesters have, um, and. and uh, you know, I, whether, you know, even the, even the peaceful ones, for example, the Moral Mondays, but when those things happen, they, 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 there's an additional burden on the Montpelier Police Department to support the Capitol Police, the Vermont State Police, because they, you know, and vice versa. Uh, we never know when they spill onto State Street. Um, and, but so it's, it's, so it's also, so it's those protests. Then you throw in all the parade permits, you know, the, and the great things that make Montpelier Montpelier. Um, but suddenly, you know, okay, well, I just said come on July 3rd, now it's do good fast, and, and uh, you know, and that's why the captain and I get stuck a lot of times, because, you know, we're, we're the freebies, you know, we're south. Um, but anyway, um, but there's a lot of unplanned overtime training requirements. We do a lot of training uh, at Montpelier Police Department, and, for example, if we do use of force training four times a year um, for, the, for each officer, we have to offer each one of those sessions twice, you know, to make sure that we cover the, the shifts and then get people through on top of other trainings that may be out of, out of state or AM. Um, I yeah, guess my was only question was um, on the 
performance measures reported um, the last year was FY16, and I think you've got more recent data, mm -hmm. um, and not necessarily tonight, but in general, I'd be interested in seeing this. Sure, we've got some data now. Um, like crime, I will like crime. I have done the actual percentage, but crime is is, is significantly down again for 2018 from 2017, which was down from 2016. Um, on that, that's reported crime. Reported though. offenses to us. Now, when I say a, a, an offense, uh, crime, um, that can be anything from car, you know, bumped into mine in the parking lot, broke the mirror, and, and dented my door. Um, that's an offense. Well, you know, we've got a financial crime worth a couple hundred thousand dollars. That's an offense. So, um, again, we need to be careful what we just talk about with those placeholders. I will tell you, performance measurements that are really meaningful are very hard for police because it's easy for us to track kind of like these, these numbers. We're great on data, but what does that really mean when you want to look at workload impact and quality that needs to go into a more complex case? Um, I am curious if this additional person uh, is, uh, because it's, they would be reducing um, overtime, if that is a net uh, increase in cost or reduction. It's going to be an increase still. I mean, because our, 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 yeah. And that's fine. You I mean, have to go to 18 to really make a difference overtime. <laughs> well, um, yeah, but I think, we're, but just by the, nat the nature of a schedule, a two, and, and what you count? you get two officers down. I mean, you've got well, to on top of that, yeah, and, and there's always, but that's always, <laughs> You know, it's it's always a, a struggle. Even when uh, I, I think, it, it, you know, in my time as police chief, I could probably count, you know, on one hand the number of weeks where we had our whatever our full authorized back when we had 17 officers when we had all 17, you know, working. So. Okay. Great. Any further questions? So next year you'll ask for the 18. <laughs> probably. Are <laughs> you still here next year? <laughs> <laughs> next year's budget already. <laughs> Well, the, in, in all honesty, in all honesty, um, you know that was certainly discussed. Um, you know, as the city manager knows, that initially I was thinking actually of 18 officers, with one potentially, you know, putting another officer back on the drug task force at some point. Uh, you know, when the, when the department's at a, a position where we can do that, and when uh, Uncle Sam decides that there's money again uh, to do that. Uh, I know Commissioner Anderson is, 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 you know, he's committed to making sure the task force still survives, you know, hoping at some point Vermont will be paid back by the Okay. Uh, Connor? Yep. I think it's just important to say, like, uh, nice to meet you, Sergeant Cochran. Nice to meet you. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, uh, I think we all owe you a great debt of gratitude yeah, for what job, you've done over so. the past couple of years here. Thank you. And, uh, you know, must have been a a big sacrifice to yourself, your family. So they're um, glad I'm home. <laughs> good, good to see you. Thanks so Thank much you. for everything. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Okay. So next up, uh, we have Jeff. I think. Right. Want to come tell us about your thoughts and plans? Yes. Is there going to be any public comment, or is this just presentations from the department? Um, yeah, I think there's only these two, unless Bob, you're coming up, but I'm not sure. I was here to answer some questions from council members. Okay, so I think we just have these two, and then we're going to start talking about um, the budget. We're going to take it in three sections, and we'll probably have some time for a public comment after each of the sections. Does that make sense? And I was able to sidebar with the chief uh, before the meeting, so I think I've had all my questions answered, unless other people uh, have questions. Okay. I think the clerk was raising his hand. And like, yes, oh, I yes. had to do some research to respond to some stuff that uh, Rosie was asking. Oh, so. oh, yeah, I just, at some point, I'd like to respond to some okay. concerns that, that okay. Councillor Kruger had. I've done some research and I figured it all out. Okay. And just before Jeff starts, I'll note that we're actually gonna I'm not gonna allow the chief to retire. So. No, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Jeff. Oh, oh th I'm sorry, yes. Before we start, before we have Jeff start, I want to uh, raise a question under our uh, ethics policy. I think uh, because I have a family member who's employed by the parts department, the parks department, um, there's a possibility for at least an appearance of a conflict of interest. My analysis of the situation is that I don't believe that I have an 
actual conflict of interest because whatever happens with the, the budget, council members don't have the ability to uh, to make personnel decisions in any of the departments. Um, but I, I wanted to, and I know that there, one of the proposals is to uh, add, uh, add staffing, potentially a full-time employee, and so I just wanted to raise that with the council, give uh, anyone an opportunity to uh, suggest that I recuse myself if, uh, if anyone believes that that's uh, necessary. No, no I, I thank you for raising it. I think uh, your considerations there of that you know we, we're not really in charge of staff. It's a fair assessment of uh, that is fine. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Okay, yeah. All Great. Right. Um, I'm afraid I don't have a PowerPoint for you, but um, I can um, would like to bring up the highlights of uh, the changes for a. Uh, uh, what is a record uh, request on, on my part from the, the council and the, and the residents. Um, in short, I'm looking for a, um, two uh, full-time positions, uh, one for the parks department, um, and that one is to, uh, to do uh, several things. One is to provide uh, the resources needed to support a growing Parks Department and to catch up on uh, a huge deficit in, uh, in hours that are spent. Um, and I'm not sure if I've, I'm, I've said this to a few people lately, and part of what I've not done, I, I don't think as well as I should have in advocating for myself over the time, is to talk about the real cost and hours that it takes uh, to do the job. And right now, as I sit here, I have at least uh, nine, I have about a thousand hours of uh, work time before I retire, and, and I have 960 hours of comp time uh, on my uh, paycheck. And I don't get time and a half as department head. I don't get those hours, uh, the time and a half hours. Um, those are uh, those are uh, real hours. Um, and so the, the the job has demanded a lot of time. And as you all probably can can feel yourselves of working on the council, if it's it's one thing if you're expected to work three committees and, and you do it, but and and then you, if you do four or five committees and you feel like you're a hero, that's one thing. But if you're expected to do that seventh or eighth committee, then that can be a bit stressful. Um, so there's one thing doing it and feeling like a hero, and then there's another thing, and it's expected of you. Uh, the way it is now, it just things don't go well unless and, and you work way more hours um, than should be expected of someone. And I do not want to pass that on to uh, whoever takes my place, whether it's Alec or anybody else. So that's. I feel strongly that uh, just to just to keep even, there's. I mean, a half-time person probably wouldn't even do it. Really, I mean, till till a couple of years ago, I was doing regularly 70 hours um, uh, every every week, averaging. Um, and so, so, Jeff, can I ask a question? Yeah. So, you now have two people, you and Alex. Right. And. This is just the parks, not the trees. So in the parks, right. and you're asking for two more, or are you taking yourself out of the equation and asking for three total? Um, well, what I'm looking for, and, and just to be clear, um, it's not two people for the parks right now. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, uh, it's two uh, um, four fifths position for the parks right now. Two I'm, four I'm fifths. Two four fifths position for the parks. Because um, we have two full-time positions that run the entire park system and run the entire tree management system. And how that's divided out is one day a week each of us is just trees and four days a week for each of us is just parks. So I'm, I hope that's a little bit confusing, but I hope I've made that Okay, um, so two at one-fifth do trees. Right. Two at four-fifths right. do parks. Okay. And just to make sure it's clear, but a little bit more complicated, um, the the new person helping in trees that you've awarded through June is two days a week, and that's temporary. It's uh, it's temporary unless 
you award any more budget um, money for that. Any any questions about that? Is that clear enough? So then you're adding, and back to are you adding a full part? So I'm I am suggesting forfeits. adding. Uh, I'm ex I'm suggesting adding a full time parks position. Yes. So at a just at a lower clear, wage. That's not in the manager's budget. That's the additional add on that we're discussing tonight. Yeah, that's right, the additional right. add on. Yeah. Oh right, I should make that distinction. Yes, yeah, that's thank you. Thank you for that. So right now, that's not added at all. However, in the tree position, I believe the, the extra tree person has been added. Now, um, that, uh, that would be <laughs> very helpful um, for the work um, that we do as well, because the, 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 um, the tree work without the ash borer just to be clear, the tree work without the ash borer has been um, something that uh, we haven't been able to keep up with the hazards, much less with the preventative pruning. So with this extra help, uh, we hope, I expect to catch up with the hazard um, work, although we may actually catch up with the hazard work with the two, two tenths person, person today because the, uh, we, I, I expect to catch up with the hazard work this winter. Uh, and then start to be able to get into uh, a preventative uh, treatment program for the street trees for the first time, for the first real time since I've been tree warden in seven years. Um, so, um, I mean, we've done some minor neighborhood prunings, but... I guess I'm, the, I'm confused about yeah. that because the part-time position, or the temporary position, was intended to work on emerald ash borer work, but it sounds like that's being pulled to use for pruning instead? Uh, uh, no, I, I, I thought I had made clear that we were really behind in um, hazard tree work and that uh, I thought it was crucial that we not go into an increased demand load with the ash borer with a backlog of hazard tree work and that, in this, that we were going to do that in the fall, in the winter, and then the spring. Um, it would shift uh, more to the ash preventative work, the treatment of trees, and the preparations, the setting up of the staging, and, and, and doing that at more, more clear ash-related work. Is that, did the I, spring is also the cycle that's of the, the four, too. That's, that's correct. That's correct. Could I did ask it, you to put a financial number to the add-on positions? That to the add-on positions? Yeah. Let's see. 55? It's... Um, for the um, for each position, it's I, I believe it's right in the in the uh, fifty five range. So yes. Right. Now, one of the positions, and I would suggest it would be considered the tree position, is that there's potential savings in my retiring next year, and that that would save ten thousand of what otherwise would be that and the difference that the person coming in would be at the low end and I'm leaving at the higher end. Are you planning to do that at the end of 2019 or June? The end of June. Okay. Yeah. Come. The 55K is inclusive of benefits, is it? Uh, yes, I believe so. Yeah. Other questions? I know this is too far out, probably, but <coughs> um, imagining for the moment that we aren't going to add any more park acreage over the next 10 years or so, which is, I think, the, the uh, expected uh, window of the ash borer, uh, do you think that we will still need the, the full staff? that you're requesting now after all the ashes get taken care of? After all the ashes get taken care of. Um, that's a good question. I, I would suggest to do a quality tree program, you would need at least a half uh, position, if not a full position, mm -hmm. uh, to do a quality preventative maintenance and a planting program. But uh, <laughs> there's a chance if you want to uh, 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 dial it back yep. um, to uh, uh, more the the tree service that's done before that you could dial it back to half time position. But what I'm, I mean, yes. What I heard you arguing is that you 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 already 
have been understaffed and, and your position has been understaffed for some time. That's right. We've been so. doing the tree program mm -hmm. with two days a week, right? And, and that is clearly, uh, clearly not enough to me, right? Uh, and again, Burlington, for comparison, I think they have four full-time folks compared to two, two days a week, uh, not even a half-time uh, position. Well, we're really hard to compare ourselves to yeah. in terms of population and, and, area. well, and areas. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Think that's a, uh, really helpful. And miles of roads, we can have a we have a clear and right of way. It's fairly clear. So there's a number of ways to look at that, and be happy to look at that uh, sometime. But the the short story is is what we're able to do and not able to do. And right now, we haven't been able to keep up with the hazard trees, which I believe in the city council's, for liability in the city council's interest, we want to at least be able to take care of the hazards. And that's, that's a minimum. And then the other question is, what kind of quality of trees do you want in your downtown and along your streetscapes? What, what value is that to the city? And I would suggest um, that, that that is a value that uh, is, is worth pursuing. Good questions. Oh, what about capital? Yes, now, good. In the budget, there's 20,000 that's called the CIP plan. Yes. But then there's another one, equipment parks plan. 21. Yes, yes. What's that? 21, the, and, and what is in that budget for this next year, and, and that's uh, of note because there's an increase in each of those two categories. So yes. the staffing and increase, those, those represents virtually all the increases, uh, the changes in the in the budget. And then the capital, and, and then the, you were asking about the, the equipment. Capital, those two got in. And so I know that in one, I saw the trucks, but I, well, I didn't understand what was inclusive in the equipment. The trucks. Plan. And the equipment is there's, um, uh, for 2020, is the um, tractor. That's in the CIP, right? That's in the equipment. I was looking at the one that wasn't CIP, maybe. The one that's, that's I have in the parks equipment that in 2020, uh, the tractor is up. Uh, a brush hog and a, a trail groomer for for cross country skiing. Those are the three things that I have listed in our equipment request. Under the twenty one. Under the twenty twenty. Okay, and the twenty that's in the CIP. Twenty, yeah. Then that in the CIP or it's still in the equipment. No, there's there's two items. That's why when I was at the Parks Commission the other night and you were talking about them, and maybe Bill can help me understand the difference in. The, the equipment that's listed in the CIP under the 20, I thought that was the tractor and another vehicle. So tractor is equipment. That's in the, so there's the equipment okay. budget and there's the capital improvements. And the equipment, we try not to ever put equipment in the capital improvements. So capital improvements is... We lump them together. We, we went over them in the same committee meeting. Okay, I see. They're in the, that's why I saw them in the same list, but you don't consider those part of the CIP report. There's Got it. Capital improvements Got it. and mm -hmm. there's equipment. Yep. Right. Yeah. Okay. They those were all separate. part of the spreadsheet, yeah. so I just couldn't okay. keep them separate. Okay. okay. Good. Is that, good. Does that answer no, your questions? Great. They're okay. in there, and that's what you wanted. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, great. Any questions about that? Do you guys still really yeah. use pagers? We don't. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, what was the question? It's, it's listed it? as cell phone and pager yeah, as one of the line items, <laughs> and I, it just caught my attention because no. pagers are yeah. cost allocations. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say, I'd, rather, I'd, I'd like to up it a little bit if we can get rid of pagers <laughs> and use like actual <laughs> technology. Yeah, the current <laughs> technology. We do actually use some debate. There's pagers in some departments so, hmm. for automated alarm systems. Oh. Uh, it's like sewer pump stations that go into a lair will trip over to the pages because they're actually pretty reliable. Yep, they but, are. Uh, they, yeah, yes. They, not in the park department. They're like faxes. They have their use. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, further <laughs> questions for Jeff? Okay. Great. All right. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank you Jeff. Okay. So we have no other further um, presentations. Um, so I, I guess at this point, um, you can go over the questions. Oh, yeah. Did you want to jump in, John? Yeah, just really quickly. Councilor Kruger saw a couple spikes in my FY18 budget and was concerned that ratchet, basically level funding my budget for next year, the spikes might show up again. It might not be adequate. 
I didn't know what she was talking about. <laughs> and I dug around there, and now I do. Um, there are two spikes, and the short answer is no, they're not going to be repeated again. Because one of them was uh, permission I got from uh, Bill to help me out with some of his budget for a, a professional development project at the University of Minnesota, which was great. Um, I love this. It's, an, it's a certificate in election administration. It's terrific. Um, and the other is that I overspent my dues, subs, and meetings. And that's because around fiscal 18 is when I became a hot commodity. <laughs> and people started wanting to have me at conferences and things. So this time around, to keep that from happening again, I have purged three of my four memberships because I wasn't getting anything from those three, and I'm tired of them. So it should be right back down to normal. So no, that, there shouldn't be any need to, to continue that spike over to fiscal 2020. Great, thank you. <laughs> and just, to, I wouldn't begrudge you expense, like I, I trust that they're legitimate expenses. I just wanted to make sure that we don't need to plan for there to be less if you need it. Interestingly <laughs> enough, this whole non-citizen voting thing, if it weren't for the classes I was taking through the University of Minnesota, I wouldn't have known it was even a possibility. I've been telling people for years, what are you talking about when they come and talk to me? And that's how I found out that it's done all over the place. So. Okay. Any um, further questions? Um, so we do uh, have other city yeah. staff if there are questions with other departments, even though we, you didn't so, ask for them, but if they come up. Um, I, I hope what I was um, um, conceiving of earlier made sense to people, where there's uh, sort of the the, what I was calling the core budget, but it's really the, um, it's the recommended part of the budget that um, is basically the same as last year. Um, so I would love to talk about that first. Um, so if there are any things that people object to or would like to change or... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Since we delivered the, uh, the budget to you, we realized that we made an error. Um, oh, yeah. So I uh, just wanted... <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. Feels uh, always good about that. Um, so I've just highlighted up here the the community fund was actually should actually be one thirty three five instead of one actually one thirty three two fifty instead of one twenty four five. I actually have it wrong on this as well, but um, the two fifty. But anyway, so I've adjusted that on this sheet and it would have been recommended that way. The idea was to recommend what they were recommending. They're coming in next week. So uh, that's still so. This number is the right one. The one up there is the right one. The one I gave you and was on the worksheet you had was nine thousand dollars too right. low. Yes. So, but the one thirty three five is the right number. One, well, actually, it's one thirty three two fifty. But oh, oh, okay. okay. But that's anyway. So that is and and you know have had they gave us the correct number. I want to be clear, and they gave us their spreadsheet with all their recommendations, and we just picked up the wrong number off the spreadsheet. Put it in. Our, our intent was to fund what they had, and that's what we would have recommended had we had it right. And it makes a minor difference. It's an in old the, number, the 124. Yeah, well, it was just yeah, actually was, a subtotal in the spreadsheet that they yeah. sent. Yeah, and we like picked the subtotal up and not the total. Yeah. So. I left out the arts part. So, since, since that's on the table for a second, I just wanted to talk about the timing of that process for that how that decision-making process happens, because we had an issue last year where um, the timing didn't really work out, and we had in our, you know, previ the previous year we had funded at a certain level, and there was sort of an assumption that we would continue, and then um, the committee met and awarded funds at a higher level because they felt that these were really worthwhile uh, items and came to us and said, okay, here's your number, and then we had the decision to either yank, I mean, not yank back because they hadn't been awarded, but to say, no, actually, we don't want to award these, or to allocate the higher level. Um, and it feels like that may have happened again this year, that they have made funding decisions, and we are now deciding right. how much to fund that at. And I think we need to revisit where their grant process falls in our budget timeline because while we have delegated the responsibility to them to decide which items to fund we 
I don't think that we intended to delegate the responsibility to decide how much total to put towards this particular area of the budget. Um, and it feels like that's really what we've ended up doing with the, the current timing. Um, so I know, Anne, you had mentioned wanting to revisit this whole process this summer a little bit. Um, well, I, so I, I agree with that. And I think um, they're actually going to be here next week to go over that. So I think it'll be a good time to talk with them about that. The, the you know, sort of how it came about. So first I'll say for this year is actually if they took last year's funding and what had been approved by the, the voters, they're still below that total. So I think I believe they believe that's what they were working with, um, whether we said that to them or not. Or that. So, so I don't think they were just spending money haphazardly. We just picked up the wrong number in this case. However, that said, um, the, the timing has always been because this is the time of year when people would be going to town meeting votes. And the thought was, if these are going to be awarded, we want these decisions made soon enough so that they can be listed in the annual report so people can see where the money is going. But we also it also kind of runs right up against our budget cycle. Uh, and for a couple of years, we actually tried to give them a number early. But that also meant that Basically, the council has picked that one budget in out of all the rest, um, and then it became unchangeable, which was, you know, fine too. But it was whatever. So I think you're right. There's a well, they get their applications done in August. Or right. The deadline is in August, so right. we could get this in the fall. But the question I think that Rosie's raising is how much money, since it's. It's not like they're starting and going, it's not like we're giving them this much money for next year and then they're saying, okay, this is how much we have to award. They get the applications, they come in, but then. They don't know what total we, they have to work with. I know, but after the application come in, they could come in and have a dialogue with us and we could decide on a total. That's what I'm well, saying. I, because they get them in August, I mean, when they need right. a full month in September. Hmm. Right. So if you can talk to them and you could really decide right. then what you wanted to do, and then they'd have a number to review them. And I think there's a lot of ways we could do that, and, and you're right. And we, we, you know, we're not going to decide that tonight. But they are coming in next week or at the next I would, meeting. So I would yeah, also it is next week. Make the case that we should not necessarily have that conversation next week. We can talk about it as being a problem, but let's set it aside as its own mm -hmm. item to figure that out. We're not going to solve it. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Um, and but then thank you for reading that. One additional option potentially is to pre-fund the following year. Um, to each year say next year we're going to set right. the fund amount at this amount and then, I think that would just require double funding but one year. One year you can be extra. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> when does that take that hit? But, you know, um, so we can move on from that, but it just we'll just take it from the house interest. <laughs> okay. Uh, so other items that are in what is effectively last year's um, budget. I have got some more that normally I would have just sent to Bill as questions, and I didn't get it together to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, these are just random. <laughs> I don't actually know what the veterans tax credit is. It's in with the sprinkler tax credit, and I'm <coughs> I don't know what that means and what we do with that. Yeah. So there's a, a an exemption given to uh, veterans that own property in the city of Montpelier for the first ten thousand um, dollars. So essentially, whatever your assessed value, if it's two hundred, if you're a veteran there's a $10,000 exemption, so your assessed value becomes 190. And essentially, because we're giving, as a community, that exemption to veterans, the rest of the population right. picks up the difference yeah. that would become, is lost by that. And how do we communicate that to the public, the vet, or to <coughs> potential beneficiaries if that's available? Yeah, um, that is a good question. It's not exactly my area. I'd have to reach out mm -hmm. to, to the assessor's office to find out um, what the process is from application to uh, I believe veterans action. associations let it's a pretty, veterans know that they can do that and it's a pretty standard practice across mm -hmm. the state okay. but the intricacies and uh, um, I can get you those answers it is an application they put in I believe so yes and it was, was voter approved so I would just want to make sure that we make it very apparent to everybody who's eligible that you know mm -hmm. we have a benefit that everyone knows about Absolutely. um I um let's see Oh, I wanted to ask about pilot. Um, there's an assumption that pilot will be the same as this current year, which was higher than past years, and I wanted to know how confident we are of that. Like, was this a one-time increase, or do we know? It's been steadily going up. What our practice has been to budget the actual from the year before, and, we, and, and historically, we've actually ended up getting a, a windfall. We've, got, we've actually collected more. 
So that's been a pretty reliable practice. The, the reason I say that, I mean, there will come a time, you know, if we were ever to hit 100%, then it wouldn't go up any further, but we're about 80 some odd percent right now. But because it's tied to the <coughs> local options taxes, as, as more communities join the system or take that on, then more revenues go into that fund. And as sales increase and those kinds of things, look, you know, as those revenues increase, all the pilot towns see increases. So it's been, it's been slowly creeping up year to year. But we've always tried to not guess that it will go up. We've tried to stick with the prior year as a base. Okay, great. So we're pretty confident. But we don't on feel it. like it's like no. I'm, I'm confident it'll be that number at okay. least. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk for a minute about the sprinkler tax credit, um, noting that we give it for every building that has it. And now that we've amended our ordinance, we, for new buildings, are only requiring it kind of at the, generally at the state, buildings that will be required by the state to have it already. So I just want to throw that on the table as maybe we want to think about um, is there a way to take that away for public buildings? What would the policy impact be? Um, because when we think about, actually, I know that you're always very concerned about giving you know, the largest property owners in town a, a break. This is a, a significant one. And so do we want to put our money there? Um, just, I don't have strong opinions, but I wanted to put it on the table as something to think so about. So I'd counter that a little bit. And I know we have some firefighters here that might want to comment on it, and the chief. Um, first of all, I think we believe that anything that creates an incentive for people to have and maintain a sprinkler is a good thing, and obviously some are required. But we, you know, we had a fire on State Street not very long ago that was put out by a sprinkler in a wooden building with residents in there, and um, there was it was happening at night when we got no call in support, and yet we were able to take care of it we, instead of the cost of fighting that fire with firefighters. You know, had it been a full blaze, would have been astronomical compared to what the credit that that building got. And so, the, part of the theory is that the people that have buildings, uh, sprinkled buildings, are putting less risk and demand on our fire department than my house is. Then, because if I have a fire, I don't have a sprinkler system, and so it could be a worse situation. So, I think. Um, the, the theory when it went in was, you know, those that are reducing their own impact on firefighting services, you know, that's sort of being picked up by the rest of us who haven't reduced that risk. And I, the only, I agree with that. The only thing I'm thinking about is the buildings that would have been required under state law anyway yeah. to get a sprinkler were also, they're yeah. benefiting as well. And is there a way, and I'm not sure there is, to, to separate out those buildings and right. not give the credit for those buildings. And this is, not a decision we can probably make in this year's budget process, but. <laughs> and it would be a charter it's, change, too. Yeah. Well, what? actually, well, no, I don't know. The charter allows us to give the credit. Right? We could change it, right? OK. Um, the Another one I wanted to just think about for a second is there were a number of um, small line items that go towards kind of general downtown promotion, such as the holiday lights, the winter festival, those sorts of things. And I wanted to kind of toy with the idea of maybe because the function of those things is to promote downtown and downtown businesses, would we want to think about taking those items and putting them under Montpelier Alive? And then if Montpelier Alive feels that these are things that really are helping downtown businesses, they can continue to make those expenditures. If they think the money would be better spent somewhere else, they could do that instead. Um, Again, I don't feel strongly about it. I just wanted to, it's an idea, and I wanted to put it on the table and think about. It, it would be, again, us delegating some decision making about. They essentially those. handle that for us anyway now. Yeah. So. yeah, but some of those events they decided not to do. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't get done if they weren't in the city budget. So. Well, that's kind of an interesting question because it's uh, what I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm understanding you saying that. Um, not necessarily changing the dollar amounts, but just where it's like how it's allocated. So like winter carnival, or winter winter festival. Celebration. Yeah. I, I I had to think back and think what is that because I yeah. honestly have never been to it. Like it's not an event that's made a big impression on me. Maybe it's made a big impression on other people. Um, so 
if Montpelier Alive and the downtown businesses felt like that was really, that helps us out a lot, they could continue to do it. If they felt like it didn't, then it would, you know, they could take that money and do some other promotion event. Just in the short time I was on their board as advisor, they had some staff. They, they don't yet have a full-time director. I mean, it's still part-time. Oh, uh, Dan's Dan, 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 Dan full time. He's, well, he's, he's, uh, he's about 30 hours, I think, the anyway, increase he, he's not 10,000 work permit. Yeah, yeah. anyway, I would think he's full time. 35? And so they always had a staff pinch with some of them, and hence they didn't want to do them. Not that they didn't think they were worthy, they mm -hmm. just had to calculate what was their priorities with their staff needs. So I, I have a little hesitation, but mm -hmm. it's a good discussion. I, I agree. I would also want to get Dan's input yeah. on that before we made that kind of a change, but that feels like the kind of thing that. You know, we could. I don't, uh, well, I guess if we approve this budget, then we can allocate we, it however we want. Okay. Well, fair yeah. enough then. So it's that's still a possibility. Once it's a line item. Right. If we okay. approve it as this is three thousand dollars for winter. But we can change festival, that. We, we can. can that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is really that's essentially good. the the appropriation you're approving is the community enhancements line, which okay. is showing you how we calculate that so people can see it to try to show those sorts of things. I mean, actually, to be to be completely honest, your your the council is actually just approving the bottom line. Of, yeah. No, but I mean, really, yeah, if you read it, and then yeah. it's managed. Nice the so, but obviously, um, we're sure. further questions. Um, I just wanted to comment that I thought the DPW performance measures were excellent. I noticed there's a number of new ones on there, and I just really applaud them for that work. Um, and hope that some of the other agencies can follow suit. We're trying. <laughs> Say that louder. <laughs> um, other than that, I think that was everything I had to say about the You single-handedly dispelled the nobody reads them. <laughs> <All right. laughs> somebody, somebody reads them. I, I love them. They were such a, you know, for each area, there were three or four. They were really measurable, and they really get at that, what are we doing and how well are we doing it? So great. that was great. Thomas to have the poster child. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's not even here. Uh, Jack. I just got a Facebook message from someone uh, saying that the person is viewing the city council meeting at the moment. There is video but no audio. Oh. I think we, we know that's been a computer system. They're trying, They're to, trying to fix okay. it. Okay. Okay. So my understanding, right. my understanding is it's being recorded and <coughs> when the, there, oh, will, be it'll be there will be audio in the post production. Okay, further comments about this portion of the budget? Uh, Jack and then Glenn. I, I had a couple of things that I noticed. Uh, one, in going over the uh, line items, I, I noticed a, a number of points where it seemed like there were big reductions in uh, health insurance expenses. And maybe not an overall reduction, but you know, in a certain department, all of a sudden we're spending 13000 or something less. Is that simply so, because of personnel? Yeah, does the finance director want yeah. an argument with the city manager? Yeah. <laughs> I went up, so for years, we've always allocated uh, health insurance costs based on a blended cost for a single two-person family based on FTEs, or full-time equivalent employees. This year, I tried to push our software system to the next level so that it would calculate a lot of these benefits and costs related to the budget automatically. In doing that, it's not so much in love with an FTE cost versus an actual health insurance cost. So in some departments, if you, you know, if everyone was um, $14,000 a year as an FTE, this year when we actually look at family plans versus single plans, that may have driven up or down the individual line item. But overall, um, costs, they have shifted very little um, across the budget as a whole. It's just it's picking up more of the actual <coughs> costs in each of the departments um, based on the, the who's subscribed to what level of service. Oh, okay. If makes that sense. makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the reason we don't like it from a budget perspective is that it's not, you know, we, we provide a plan for employees regardless of what, you know, what their dependents are. And so, you know, a single department shouldn't get a, a budget benefit if that particular year they happen to have a bunch of single plans and their budget gets cut so they don't have to, you know, or somebody else, you know, hires someone who has lots of dependents and their plan goes up. And so, you know, we thought if, we, if, if everyone counts exactly the same in the health insurance, then there's no winning and losing in a particular department as far as, you know, 
it, there's no budget advantage, and so we're, mm -hmm. we're still working at keeping it that way. That right. you know, it's, um, because we want people to hire the best people, not what their health insurance yeah. cost is. Mm -hmm. But for this year's budget, at least we did it this way because of the software. So the also, avoid. Don't know whether it's going to go up or down this Depends way. who wins the argument next year. <laughs> <laughs> That, that also protects us against discriminating yeah, against people. Yeah, but it's more status. It's, it's, right. Yeah, but I think it, it's just really, it just, I think it, it gives a, f a more accurate cost of the delivering the service. You know, if, if, if you have 17 police officers, let's say, and it all costs the same per unit, then that's what it really costs us to deliver the service, not if you happen to have 17 that are all single or 17 that all have kids. You know, it, it's just, it's a better way of looking. I mean, at as long it. as that information is not a part of the hiring process, right. then oh no, it wouldn't be necessarily. I, I, but a more accuracy, more precision feels. Yeah. Well, and the, and the challenge on the budgetary side, and I agree with Bill's concept, a hundred percent. And I would love to know, but I would love to. And we may come back to the FTE allocation. The, from my perspective, when we start making changes, even minor changes in salary and benefit line items. It has a ripple effect throughout the budget that is pretty monumental. So it's not just if you reduce someone's wages by a thousand dollars, it's reducing their retirement, it's reducing their FICA, it's reducing their unemployment, it's reducing the workers' comp. So all those things, and then if they're an allocated employee that works in more than one department or fund, for instance, you could have that split. So it, I'm trying to eliminate the amount of manual labor that goes into making this, what appears to be minor administrative changes. Um, I would highlight there is a an option to support universal health care for everyone. Yes. <laughs> we were big supporters of that. I know. Anything, anything further? For that reason? Yes. Uh, first off, while we're still on insurance, um, I know that there are some employers who uh, offer financial incentives to employees to uh, to opt out of their insurance. That's my ins my employer does that. Uh, have we looked at doing that? We do offer um, currently uh, an incentive or a, a buy-in <coughs> provision. Um, it's 31, 31 20 per year, works out to whatever that works out to, over 26 pay periods of flat number, um, where if they have evidence of coverage through a spouse or, or other means, then we would offer that in lieu of, of health insurance. Uh, great. Um, and that is included in the health insurance line item. I also had a question about uh, Unemployment, because I noted noticed lines about unemployment compensation. Are are we a reimbursable employer or a taxable employer? We are a. You're going to catch me on this. I believe it's a I'm reimbursable not to definition. Catch you, yes. Uh, we only pay out uh, based when on we the, have someone who has claims. Correct. Okay, that's correct. reimbursable. And our yeah. our total um, total premium has has continued to decline since the um, since the financial issues of 2008 or whatever. Uh, so our, I think our total premium for this year is right around $4,000 for the entire city. So uh, that's pretty minor. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Um, first, I want to say that this was really hard for me to read because it, a lot of it is beyond me, uh, but I did try. Uh, and uh, I got some help um, from Kate. And one of the things that she noted uh, so I'll follow up with the rest of them later. <laughs> uh, is under the, the, the sewer fund. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious about the. Um, it looks like from the the revenues in in fiscal year 18 the actual we got something like twice what we had budgeted in tipping revenue. Um, Six yep. seventy. To, to 1.1, should we be expecting that again? Should so, we be changing that? Again? So that, um, in FY18, we budgeted about 650 or $675,000 in, in septage and leachate revenue. Um, in actuality, that exceeded a million dollars uh, in FY18. But the reason we had budgeted a lower amount was we were anticipating work to have begun on the aging mm -hmm. infrastructure project. Um, when we did the budget at this time last year. So we were anticipating construction starting during some period of the year, which was gonna diminish our capacity to accept that material, um, coupled with cleaning of um, the digester clarifiers, uh, because you have to put those out of commission when you're <laughs> doing that work. Um, so there was a hesitation to 
budget at the same level that we had been receiving revenue because we thought we would not hit that mark. Uh, in hindsight, we exceeded it, um, but we're looking at a similar reduction in revenue anticipated for FY20. Because of the, because because of the, of the work being done. Okay. Yeah. Further questions about the basically the whole budget? Yep, yeah, one ahead. more, but I don't want to. Um, so I did notice on the council breakdown and the manager's breakdown, both have line items for advertising that were seemed high to me. I don't have a good sense of what, but I I know that we you know we advertise our um, our agendas and mm -hmm. uh, committee vacancies and stuff, but I was not sure why. It was listed in both places, and how all that just the numbers intrigued me there. Sure, that's the guy about his own budget. They did his <laughs> know. Jamie really manages that part of it. But they so basically, as I understand it, the the council portion is for meeting advertisements, legal notices, the the things related to council advertising for committees. Our, the manager's one is when we're for job ads or oh, anything yes. else that yeah. we you know, any other kind of notices or ads, or if we put something in about um, fall pickup, or those, you know, those different types of other publications. So um, that's how she divides them out. So okay. There's no real re I mean, I think it's really all one and the same, but it's the way we always done it, so. That's not a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I said it, funny. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Just, uh, this is a uh, public record since it's sent in the text on official business, but uh, on Rosie's point there, uh, Montpelier Alive through Dane Groberg, there's no problem with funds being allocated to be used at their discretion versus specific items. An example, the line fall, winter festival was used for Moonlight Madness this year. Oh. So, but that, just the cliff's notes of what he might say if he comes in here. And he says the sound's working fine, so. I was going to say, he must have heard the sound if he gave you the answer. Okay. Uh, are we ready to move on to the next section, team? Yes. Is this where public comment? Yep, I was going to, because if we are, then I'll move. I guess <coughs> I would just put on the table that the $1,000 um, USS Montpelier uh, <laughs> line item, my understanding is that that's Montpelier's contribution towards the hotel rooms for the members of the, um, for the sailors on the USS Montpelier to come be in our parade. I don't love the idea that we're charging Montpelier citizens extra money to pay for the U.S. military to put uh, their members in a parade. I feel like that should come from the U.S. military. Um, but I understand that that's a touchy subject and that some other people may feel very strongly about it. But I wanted to put it out there. I know it's just a thousand dollars, but. And I, I had mentioned this to Rosie earlier. Um, I, I have some similar concerns about it, but one of the things that I do particularly like is that it's an opportunity for um, for the sailors to come and see Montpelier, the community for which they're um, you know they're in essence on. Um, but I also wonder if it might be a better or maybe maybe a, a more community accessible thing to turn it into some sort of like party that the city goes to i know that there's like a, a barbecue i think that happens you know if, if something like that would make it, it would make me certainly feel more comfortable using taxpayer money um for that but i'm also assuming that they probably stay at the capitol plaza which i think might raise some Room to meals tax. Questions and well, I think, but I think also, you know, given the the project that's ongoing, and, and I realize yeah. that you know they're a business in the community, but um, I just I, I think it's important, and I I wasn't picking up what you were, <laughs> but yes, I, I had raised these concerns too, and and I know that there's a committee I guess that that yes, addresses this, but um, I just I, I can think of ways to sort of bring the community into this that benefits everyone. Um, and not not just sort of going to to help defray the cost of rooms. I'll just weigh in that you know I think that is in <laughs> practicality how it's been used. Um, the, the initial funding was simply to aid in actually even the museum upstairs and the whole USS Montpelier effort and our relations with the hotel and to bring people hotel. up and so excuse me did i say hotel? i meant the sub the i'm oh, sorry the I sub. Like, i'm sorry the, the, <laughs> the submarine well, then it's, <laughs> no, no 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 i'm sorry it's a slip um and 
you know, they were people, there are other sources of funding obviously for us, so the city contributed $1,000 for them to participate. I think as a matter of practice, the committee that steers it just uses, that's what they used it for as room, but it could have been for, you know, food or any number of other things. The idea was to build a connection at McCormick right. and, and, and see and the, the city. The VFW, VFW posed to the American Legion are the primary sponsors of these right. um, activities and the visits, and they're the ones that provide you know, coordination of schedules and meals and, and all the other things that go along <laughs> with, you know, just hotel um, stays. And, it, you know, it is a community connection that I think is held strongly, um, especially within the, the veteran community. Uh, and I'm not advocating one way or another. And I think, and if I may, I believe you were yeah. able to experience some time uh, yeah. with the sailors as well yeah, when they were in the community. So, <laughs> so there's a lot of different elements to it. Yeah. Um, In fact, several years ago, before security was as tight as it is now, the the former mayor and police chief spent a week on the sub. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. I guess I would say to me, it feels a little bit like a recruiting activity, and I feel like if the U.S. government wants to pay for it, great, we would be happy to have them. But I'm not really sure why we would pay for it. But I, it's a thousand dollars, so. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I I uh, would love to to keep. I mean, I would, I would love to also maybe talk about how it's spent, but that's also I think a discussion for that committee. Um, I hear you on the on the recruitment aspect of it, but I think it's uh, equally as much for the sailors themselves. Um, it's just a, it's a nice thing for them, uh, you know, to have a, a connection to the place where they're ostensibly representing. So um, anyway, if people have other further thoughts on that. Is this the kind of thing that uh, other other places do also? Is this unique to Montpelier? Do other places where there there's a connection with? I don't know how many ships I, are named after other towns. Yeah, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I know there's a new USS Vermont because they were also here this year. Yeah. Um, it was their first time, it's and they're good. It's not yet commissioned. PCU. Right, yeah. and. The, the plan for them is to rotate them around different places in Vermont, but they wanted to start in the capital. Um, but I don't know about others. You know, I come from a shipbuilding town, so we had ships. <laughs> <laughs> um, did, did you, would you want to make a motion about that, or I mean, can we direct the committee that it just be used for some? I mean, so they can, in essence, reallocate the funds so that that those funds aren't being used to pay. I, I think you it? want to have that conversation with them. I, I wouldn't want to make a motion without like including them in that mm -hmm. dialogue. You know what I mean? Yeah, they've been so. people serving that committee for yeah. a long time. Mm -hmm. I think they deserve the the nod of conversation for sure. I don't need to make a motion on it tonight. I if I'm not getting the sense that anyone else feels I, strongly about this, so I have to say I haven't thought about it much until you pulled it up. But I I see your point, and I think that it's definitely worth. Uh, thinking about at least, I mean, I, how much is the U.S. military budget at the moment? I think it's large, and I don't know that we need to help that personally as the city. I think the city has its own things to do. So I also don't feel ready to to move anything, but I think it's I I, I want to say thanks for bringing it up at least. And I'm, So maybe somebody can mention to the committee that we're... We can go. We, and yeah. <laughs> Bill, would you communicate? Oh, we certainly will. There's Absolutely. There's some yes. question about it, and then yeah. maybe they can speak to us at one of the hearings. Sure. Okay. sure. okay. Uh, any other potential changes to the core budget? Okay. Comments from the public on the core budget? Okay, I'm going to take it as though we're ready to move on. Then. I'm just kidding, my buddy. Okay. All right, so the next section is uh, the additions uh, to the base budget <clears throat> in meeting the strategic goals. So this includes things like um, additional CIP funding, the new police officer, uh, increase to housing trust funds, um, uh, new full-time tree management, Ashmore staff, facility director, um, starting in uh, April 2020 um, with their associated uh, budget amounts. 
So we have a finite number of things to talk about in this section. Um, uh, relative to what's proposed here, would anybody like to make any changes or qu have questions or etc.? Yeah. So I'd like to put something on the table. I was talking to a number of people the last uh, couple of weeks here, and the idea came up, and I think it's been discussed in previous councils, uh, which may have been the catalyst for raising the salary. I think you worked on that, Rosie, a bit. Um, just the idea that you know you want any citizen of Montpelier, to, any resident, to be able to come up here uh, and, and sit in on our meetings and weigh in. Um, I think that's tremendously important. Uh, in addition, you want anybody to feel like they can run for office um, while still having some family obligations, maybe child care, taken care of. Um, and I've noticed other municipalities do have a program like this where there would be child care provided at certain meetings. I don't think we could flesh out a whole program in the time we have, but I'd like to get the ball rolling. And I was just doing some math on the back of a napkin. Uh, to get like, you know, uh, I think a licensed child care provider, you could probably do it for about $20 an hour. Um, if you figured in about 24 meetings a year, um, it would come out to about $2,000. Um, what, I'm, what I'm struggling with, things that, things that I think would be on the table, uh, where would you put everybody, you know? Uh, could we put them in a conference room? Um, if there was just like one kid or something, would that be worth doing for the meeting? Um, and then what about the other boards like the DRB, some of these other ones who have been doing some real heavy lifting recently? Um, I think I'd still like to put some money aside to try it out with a cap of $2,000 on it uh, to maybe s put together a process in the next couple of weeks where if somebody did need child care, whether it be someone serving on a committee or someone in attendance, uh, there would be a threshold, maybe you know, two or three applications for this where we would provide child care for them. I think it fits into civic engagement. I think it fits into the values of the city. And I don't think we want to be exclusionary. It was a step in the right direction by raising the council salaries uh, to take that into consideration. But I, I think asking for $2,000 is modest enough uh, to just make sure we send the message that you know we are open to everybody, You know, not just folks who have the luxury of putting in the time here for four hours a night here. So I'd like to put that on the table. Um. I would love to talk about that. I'm happy to support this idea. Um, I also would love to talk about that in the next section. Is that okay? That's where I just okay. put it. So uh, I'm going to it's, it's line 64 there, child care at meetings. Just got added. Okay. So, we'll, so let's take that up in a, a little bit here. Um, but for now, uh, in just the uh, that green section, the additions to the base budget, um, anything uh, Outside of that, I guess we throw in that, that yellow section still again. So, um, any proposed changes to anything in this section? The only thing I wanted to mention in this section is I think we may have, I may have asked this at the last meeting or maybe we talked about it after, but I want to acknowledge that, you know, starting a facility director in April 2020 does then obligate us for that full time position in the right. following year. And so, I, do we have any better numbers about what that? Well, we've, we've estimated a full time would be about $100,000 with benefits and everything. That's why the remainder of it is in the next section at 75. So we would be adding 75,000 to the following year's budget. So I don't know. I mean, it's making I mean, a future mean commitment. I'm not for it. I just want to. Yeah. <laughs> this is a nice thing that happens in the budget this year, but it doesn't happen right. next year. Right. So no, we, we were cognizant of that, and that was, but it was just a way of trying to get it in and still stay, <laughs> keep a base budget at cost of living. So, so just you know how I'm thinking about that, um, for the green section uh, here, this is, I'm thinking of this as um, <coughs> at least starting them in April, and we can talk about any sooner or anything additional in the next section. So is it, is it at least this much? Does that make sense? Yes, I'm just right. pointing out that it's also committing us for the, for following, the following year to be a full-time yep. position. Um, well, that's really true of a number of the things in here, like adding right. a police officer. Right. Yeah. We're not going to hire yeah, someone for enough. one year. Yeah. Yeah. Right, but, but I think the, yeah. the point is that the, the, pol the police officer is going to be approximately the same amount next year, whereas mm -hmm. this one will be a 
be we'll be starting multiple. with a new in multiple. increase. Multiple. And to be fair, it doesn't necessarily obligate us because the next council could do anything <coughs> they right. want. But uh, right. you know, at least we should say that's the intent. That yes. it's in the base. Um, I would actually make a proposal to change something here, um, which is uh, up in the um, the first line there, additional CIP funding. Um, it's we have proposed to uh, increase the amount we're spending there by fifty thousand dollars. This is the last step that we are taking towards fully funding um, infrastructure, and I would actually propose that uh, we break that up in two years and that we spend an additional twenty-five thousand instead of fifty this year, and then um, look to add that, uh, that the remaining twenty-five uh, the following years, spread it out a little bit. And when you think about that, is there anything that we would be foregoing doing in the coming year? That Probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anything, anything. But I would trust them to find whatever the right project was that could be, um, could be deferred. Mm -hmm. and, and so many of the things, uh, <coughs> uh, one year may not make or break it. If it is, then it's a uh, high priority and they're going to be doing it anyway. I am intrigued, but I'm also very cautious about doing that because the reason that we're doing this is we put off stuff for a long time. So yeah. I, I hear you, and I, the reason I'm feeling okay about it is because it's still an increase. You know, like we're still making progress towards, towards it. Um, it's just, it's an 11 year, or it's like it's one year longer than I but, I, but the thing is, it, it, in my mind, uh, it frees up money in the next section. Because, uh, I mean, I, I would like to not break the bank. <laughs> I'm receptive to that suggestion. Yeah, okay. yeah. me too. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting some I would getting like to nods. hear some staff feedback. And I, I mean, I, I guess my, my concern with this is like, to the lights and the sidewalks and all of those, those are like directly noticeable things along with you know, the addition of staff and, and things like that. But I mean, these are things like Front Porch Forum was lit <laughs> for a while. So, but, and I, I think it's also like those are things that are what attract people to Montpelier. So with all of the development that we have coming and, you know, I, I'm wary of cutting it now to, with the expectation that hopefully next year at the council, whatever that body, you know, whatever we look like next year, um, will we'll feel similarly that like allocating that twenty-five thousand is still a priority. Same question. I'm process. Yes, we have the reserve fund, right? Mm -hmm. Do we set out more familiar with like state budgets, right? There's a waterfall, but there's a certain amount in the reserve budget where you have priorities set out that you fund it if you have this much left over. Do we have any such waterfall in the state no. budget? No. We don't. Okay. I mean, we don't not establish that way. We do occasionally fund things out of one time money, out of reserve. For example, the, the money that Jeff was referring to that the council allocated this year for tree that came from the reserve or when we purchased the property on. Um, Old Country Club Road, that was a reserve type thing. So uh, we do use that for those purposes, but actually the, the general policy is that we don't use the, the um, reserve to fund the operating budget. We'll target it to one-time type purchases. I think we could, and just to address you know, your thoughts there, Ashley, I mean, we, we could say, you know, whatever it is that you cut, it can't be the lights in it. <laughs> <laughs> so the LEDs aren't in there anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's fair. For next year. So. Um, but, yeah, I don't know if we could, I mean, I was, I was hoping to have a vote on the budget tonight, but we could uh, get more feedback on if, if there are people that are interested in this idea, we could find out what that well, would you could, look like. You know, you don't take a final vote until the 24th. Oh, yeah. So, so what, oh, that's, that's what, well, it's not strong. So technically, if we're really following the rules, mm -hmm. the, the pro, which are made to be broken, <laughs> um, you would vote to adopt the council's proposed budget. Mm -hmm. And we have to have two public hearings on that proposed budget. And then you vote to finally adopt 
the budget that goes on the ballot. So we could. Still so you could you could so if you want you know if you said this is our draft budget our proposed budget and then we could f come back and say well here's what we would change for twenty five thousand this is what we would adjust recommend to you or oh God you can't do that and then you could you have two public hearings to so you're not committing yourself necessarily you're saying here's here's what we're moving forward with. Um, would people generally in a Strabo sort of way feel comfortable moving forward with that assumption or not so much? The assumption that we will cut it unless we hear from staff. Well, that we right, that it's 25 or, instead of 50. It goes into 25 tonight right? with the possibility of changing that, it. That we could increase it later. Yeah, I would. <laughs> You'd rather keep it at 50 now and, and then cut it from later. Staff yeah, yeah. Cut because it. it's always it's hard to if we cut it and then say, oh great, we've got all this money to do this other stuff, and then staff come back and say, no, we really can't. Then it's going to be harder to give up the other stuff. I mean, true, <laughs> but uh, I guess what's the same well, decision? I, I guess I, I guess I would add that my priorities are with some of the other things. Ashley, did you have something? Well, I'm just, I'm, so I'm looking, and maybe I am misreading this. It's entirely possible rules are not my best thing. <laughs> um, but just in terms of like looking where the increases seem to be street maintenance and construction, there seems to be an increase there. Uh, as someone who lives on the State Street, you know, this has been like an ongoing thing with the water main there. Um, but I know that there are other streets that are in dire need as well, and I know it's only it's fifty thousand dollars, which is like a substantial sum of money. But mm -hmm. sort of compared to the grand scheme of the entire city budget, it's not that large. But to me, those are the kinds of things that you really get a lot out of your investment in, in terms of like visible, tangible things. Like people are complaining about, there's a pothole, can you fix this? And instead of saying, well, it's on our list, you know, and, and hopefully we'll get the funding to, to address this next year. You know, those are, those are things that we can respond to, we can take care of. You know, obviously understanding that emergencies like would be taken care of, you know, either way, but it just seems like to me the 50,000 puts us in a place where those things can be addressed. They can not be sort of deferred any longer, which I can't believe I'm the one saying, like, don't procrastinate, mm -hmm. because that's like my best thing. But um, it just strikes me that those are, those are immediate things that people actually see and can appreciate immediately. Um, and I think, you know, I, to me, I, I think there's a lot of benefit in that when, you know, when we see all of the feedback that we see on Front Porch Forum or Facebook or Twitter or, you know, it's it's generally about things that you can see right now. Um, and I would just, I just want to be mindful that, that sometimes addressing those now rather than deferring, even though, you know, we may be able to allocate that money differently right now doesn't sort of generate the same kind of like return on investment. The, the only thing about the road comparison actually, it's like with East State can't be done even with the 50,000 because it's a major right. utility street. And so the streets that are the worst are the worst because they're going to be so expensive. They've got to right. be dug down to the baseline, utilities replaced, and so then you're tying in with grants and all sorts of federal, state, local dollars. So it's not, the $50 isn't going to unfortunately help the worst problems. Right. And but the it, priorities in fixing the roads is much more complicated mm -hmm. than the $50 can handle. I know I totally and I totally appreciate that. I think that was just that's hap that happened to be my sort of no, but like every tangible. street that's been put off has a reason. So, well, you, within the within the CIP, there's all sorts of measurements of why this street is being left to get really bad because it's got to be totally invested. Mm -hmm. And this street, even though it was just done, is now being redone because we want to maintain the goodness. So it's mm -hmm. more complicated. That's all. I just yeah. mm -hmm. I just want to give you. It's a much more complicated picture. Um, I'm going to move on unless one of you indicates to me that you are changing your mind. Okay. Move on okay. with what assumption? Yes, yeah, she's going to um, move That is 25. Wait. No. What? Oh, instead yeah. of 50? I would, no, I would, I guess I would like to keep it at 50. Well, uh, so. If, 
I think, I think she was counting nods. I'm, I'm counting <laughs> nods. Oh, okay. I thought you were looking <laughs> right at me. No, and, no, no I'm, looking at, I'm looking at you, you I'm, four. I'm with the mayor. I think. Okay. Yeah, okay. And if you change your mind, then you don't know. Keeping an open mind. Nice okay, okay. <laughs> we, can take it we, can, we can take it away. That's true. Okay. You have this option. Any further changes to the screen section? Going once, going twice. Okay, comments from the public on this section. Well, let's give it a little longer than that. Just no, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I think it's the add-ons. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Um, all right, we're going to move on. How are you all doing? Do you need a break? I'll have a break. Okay, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back and talk about the last <laughs> section. Ready to go. So, I don't know where Bill went. <laughs> Bill! Marco! <laughs> Paula! I hate the people that I'm not looking for, the ones that answer me in the store, because I'm like, oh, you're not my person. <laughs> okay, uh, so we're going to come back center. from our... We want it all At the fire we'll station. The I know, right? <gasps> the fire With the station. fire pole? That's what I told him. I said, we'll, cut, we'll give you the extra firefighter, and you, but you have to do the daycare at the fire station. And they were all for it, so we're, we have a deal. Here we go. Uh, all right, so before we get into the chart that we just developed, um, I, would, which is, I would like to observe just a starting point for discussion. Um, Who came up with that idea? That oh, yeah. gosh, I don't know. The teacher some, amongst some us. Some silly person. Um, all right, so uh, I would actually love to start with public comment. If there are things that people um, would like to weigh in on or questions people would like to ask, we're going to start there. So, dear members okay. of the public. I've <laughs> <laughs> been waiting patiently. I've been waiting. Yeah. Uh, hi, my name's Kate Stevenson. I'm the chair of the Montpelier Energy Advisory Committee. And um, I have questions about facilities director position, um, which I'm really excited about. It's something we've been talking about for years. And um, just want to um, get a little bit of clarity around you know, what the rationale was behind the idea of starting it in 2020. Um, I'll, I'll just give my a couple of different questions. Um, and then maybe Bill or other staff can respond. But, um, so the, the, the rationale behind this, the starting it only later, um, what the position actually involves and whether it has an energy component at all or if it's only facilities um, and just kind of what you envision it to include. And then the other question was whether um, this budget that we had funded last this year, um, 0.25 FTE for Steve Twombly and whether that stays consistent or that goes away with the addition of the new facilities director. So those are a couple of my questions. Okay. I can answer, I think, all three of them. The, the, fir the, the first one was why the, the April 2020 start. I mean, the, the most direct answer was just financial. We were trying to stay within, keep the overall budget within the 2.5%. The and so that was a way to get the position in the door, and but not increase it that much this year. Um, but this, the second thought behind it is that we've also proposed to, we're seeking a planning grant and some matching funds to do, to actually do an energy plan with you folks and thinking that, well, that might not be done immediately. So there could be some time, um, you know, it's not optimal, but it, it, it that was, that was so, sort of the rationale. Second part, you asked about the duties of the position. I mean, we. We definitely think it has an energy component. We see, and we spent a long time as a, a team talking about this. Um, obviously, we've got a lot of facilities ourselves that need to be taken care of, and those they, and energy is one of the biggest things. And we've made, I think, a lot of successes as thanks to you folks. And we'd like to continue doing that. And we're going to be adding a, you know, presumably a parking structure. We're going to be adding potentially a new rec facility down the road. You know, it's not like we're going to have less facilities to be managed. And we also have our district heat system, which is being sort of operated by DPW, but not really being managed. And we see this as a person that could really help run that in, in the way it should be. Um, so those all have energy aspects. We don't necessarily see this as a person that's going to know how to 
develop a strategic plan around energy, but it might be a person that can help put it into place, which is why we're suggesting the separate energy plan versus, you know, it's, it's, so it wouldn't who would be a do this energy plan? Well, we were hoping, we were looking for a grant to get a planning grant to hire an energy consultant to work with your group, but it would not be you folks doing it. It would be drafted, but obviously you'd be on top of that. Um, but then this person would be a key person to help implement that. I, again, I haven't thought it through in fine detail as, you know, at what point when we're doing out in the community is a person who's really good at making sure buildings run, but you know, we'll cross that bridge and we'll get to it. And finally, we do still have Steve in there, uh, in part because we had only recommended part-time funding at this point, and, uh, but also just because he has, he, he's a huge asset and has, knows a lot about uh, our buildings and those kinds of things. So we, we had left that in. I think I answered your question. Yeah, so I, can I just make a couple comments? Yes. Uh, um, you know, one, in, in, a, in a recommendation to, to accelerate this, and, you know, it seems like there is potentially some interest in the, the optional part to um, push this forward to the start of FY 2020, but I just want to remind the Council of the Net Zero 2030 goal that you all adopted or that the council adopted back in 2014 and that was reinforced in the resolution this fall um, which you know just as a reminder that 2030 is getting closer every day <laughs> um, and so what the resolution called for was putting together this 10-year plan and um, and so my concern about pushing this out till April of 2020 is just that it you know we we lose that whole other year of starting to implement projects. Um, we haven't discussed it as a committee, but my personal feeling is that I feel like whoever is in this role um, should be very involved in the development of the energy plan. It shouldn't be something that is just like written by a consultant and then handed off to someone that is hired. Because as we've learned in the last year or two of implementing projects um, and getting the revolving loan phone off the ground, like there. A lot, these projects are very detailed. They require a lot of conversations with the city staff. Um, there's a lot of work that has to happen to kind of get them shovel ready. Um, and my concern about having a consultant come in at kind of doing this high level analysis is that, that they, re you know, you really have to have someone who can get down in the weeds and, and get into the details because the 10 year plan needs to have a lot more details <laughs> um, for it to really have a chance of succeeding. Um, so, you know, energy planning grant, great having a consultant to help. Wouldn't it be great to have the facilities director on board to work hand in hand with that consultant to really make a plan that's effective and something that we can really um, get, get going more quickly. So those are just a few thoughts for me. Great, thank you. More comments, yeah. Hi, I'm Polly Nickel. I'm co-chair of the Housing Task Force, so not surprisingly, I'm here to talk about the funding uh, for the Housing Trust Fund. And uh, first, I wanted to express appreciation for the $75,000 recommendation. That's the highest that's um, ever been recommended. So not to be un grateful, but um, I also wanted to advocate for um, the additional funding for enough money uh, to fund both Taylor Street and the First Time Home Buyers uh, Program. And, and also um, to remind you that a month or so ago when you adopted the new policy governing the Housing Trust Fund, um, it, it's, the process is that applications come in the advisory committee meets and makes recommendations to the council. So um, it, it was a little taken aback to see, um, you know, recommendations targeted to specific projects or, um, or programs. But anyway, that's that's um, sort of an aside. Um, I'm sorry, Holly. Do you mean the fact that we listed first homeowners and the Christchurch separate? They shouldn't yeah. be separate. Well, the well the. Um, policy that you adopted says you get recommendations from the committee and then the decision is made about what it goes for, not okay. that it kind of works in, in So uh, yeah. I'll, 
just take the blame for that. I, I understood that was how the basis for the funding request was split up those three ways. So I just tried to make sure when we were recommending breaking funding, it made logical sense to go with what had been requested. So if that was not right, then certainly the council can put whatever number they, they want in there. So. <clears throat> and whatever we approve should not necessarily be a, like a, a mandate to right. fund a particular project or not. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's, that's a clarification. Thank mm -hmm. you for making um, So I also just wanted to tell you about a conversation that I had with Eileen Peltier from Downstreet, who, who couldn't be here tonight. Because I asked her, you know, are both of these programs <coughs> really important to Downstreet? And she said yes. And she said, um, you know, although they obviously want the money for Taylor Street because it's it's come from them so far and, and you know will come out of their development. But um, I'm sorry, by Taylor Street, Street do you mean what we're referring to as Christ Church? No, the the seventy five. Oh the additional the, the we've already the, approved. Okay. Yeah. The part that's already in the budget. Um, but she said that um, home buying in Montpelier is absolute has been absolutely crazy this past year. That they've that they've never seen anything like it. She and I think this might be a slight exaggeration, but she said a house goes on the market and people get there within five minutes and make an offer. And that the first time home buyers program has really made it possible for people of modest means to have a chance to buy a home in Montpelier um, because it's just so tight. And um, the uh, planning office did a survey of existing users of the program, so this is a little bit old, but in the survey, 75% of the people said it was absolutely essential, either absolutely essential to their ability to buy a home or very important to buy a home in Montpelier. And for that other 25%, I think maybe you know tweaks could be made so we're, 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 we're not giving money to people who absolutely don't need it. Um, the other thing Eileen said is, which is kind of shocking, is that the housing affordability situation in Montpelier has actually gotten worse in spite of everything um, that's been done because the demand is just so great. Um, and I wish I had cut out the article, but th there was when um, Asiana House and another business closed, there was an article either in the Bridge or the Times Argus, and one of the reasons cited was difficulty in finding employees. And one of the reasons cited as difficulty for finding employees was <coughs> the lack of housing. So, um, I mean, you all know where I'm coming from, but I think it's it's really an important investment for Montpelier for a lot of reasons, and I I would urge you to fund it at a higher level. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? Okay. Uh, all right. So looking at the lists that we have up there, um, I don't want to understand all of those to necessarily be votes, uh, but as a place to start um, discussion. Um, so, I mean, if we were just counting up a number of, um, X's. of X's, um, it would seem that at least the Christchurch one has the the most. Is that is yep. that a fair yep. assessment? Yep. So it seems like that one, we're probably pretty much uh, all in agreement. I mean, unless you, Donna, object. what's your half on that? I was going the amount that was listed here. I was going to cut it in half. So <coughs> ten thousand. Yeah, ten thousand. That's what I thought. But you wanted. Oh, you didn't do first time home buyers, okay. And looks like you've got six for synergy half funding. Do you do you want to make a case for half the Christ Church or Well, I wanted to give it something, but I wanted to give other things something too to get them like the art project to me is really important that we start an art fund mm -hmm. as a placeholder to build on. So that's the other priorities. Is it is it safe to put an X for the full amount for the for the Christchurch line? Okay. Seeing a bunch of nods, so I think we can put that one in. Got it. Okay. I'm on it. So that's twenty-five. 
Yeah. Okay. Um. Twenty actually. Twenty. Wrong line. Twenty. Yeah. <coughs> um. So one hypothesis is that we can start from the top and work our way down. Another hypothesis is that we can go with um, sort of there's a, there's a bunch of things that have four x's um, by them. Some some even have five x's. So should we talk about it in that? Our synergy actually has six. Oh, did the I miss half. that? The half. Art syn oh, the, the half. Oh, yeah, okay, so um, is everybody down with art synergy at at least half the funding? Okay, so we can safely, a bunch of nods there. Okay, so we're going to put an X by that one. Um, Parks. So one of the things that's confusing to me about this here team um, is that the second line, New Parks part-time position, only had two X's, but the full-time position had five. And that is illogical, because the point <laughs> of the way this was split up was that it was, uh, I'm going to get this wrong, 20,000, yeah, I'm right, okay. Well, so, it just meant they wanted to go straight to the, to the right. full time. So, yeah. so, okay, yeah, so if you want support for the full time, then you, obvi you definitely have support for that. So is it, is it true that if you put an up. X by the full time New Parks position that you also are intending to put an X by, but basically you, you want to fund it at 55,000 rather than 30? Correct. I just want yeah, to make right. sure everyone's correct. And, and, and if, assuming we were going in not knowing what other people's votes were, we'd be saying, well, I'll go for the full, full thing, but if there aren't enough votes for the full-time position, I would go for half. Right. So I, gave, I thought that was like a one, you could vote one time, and if you voted for the half, mm. you, if you voted for the half, you wouldn't support funding the whole, but if you voted for the whole, you'd support either. Okay, that was a different <laughs> understanding than my read of the situation, but I understand what you're saying. Um, so, uh, is so I think that's an, a yes. For so I think that I think that's a lot of people being very interested in this, in the full-time new parks position. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay. So, one hypothesis team is that if we go through this, we might end up with a what, were anybody's votes contingent on, like, you know, well, actually, I'm just going to keep going. Um, let's talk about the facilities director. Um, there are five X's by that one. I actually, so I feel that it may be more honest and budget impact wise to actually fund it at the full time. Mm -hmm. um, level, so yeah. this is one that I have less of a problem than others with uh, supporting. Half up. <laughs> Just because I, it's, I mean, really, that's what we're committing ourselves to. Um, yeah. the, the next council is not going to cut this position um, after somebody's been there for a quarter a year. Okay. Um, might. Oh. Well, that could happen. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just to sorry. Be fair. I, so I'm not. Or there were enough. There was enough support of that anyway to, to go. Three point eight percent or four point five percent. We're at three point eight, isn't that? Uh, let's see. Isn't that the one we're looking at? Four point three cents and four percent. Okay. It's this one here at the three, bottom. Three point eight percent. I gotta tell you, team. I, I my hope was to not get to four. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the budget was 3.8%, the tax rate would be four, almost 4.4 4 cents, so 4.4% tax increase. Sorry, what? This is, this is the budget increase, 3.8. Yeah. This is the tax rate, yeah. four point, almost 4.4 4 cents, and this yeah. is the, tax, the percent of tax rate increase, 4%. Right there. And then why? Mm. So the total budget increase percentage is lower than the tax rate percentage increase. Right. Okay. Again, I was I was hoping to not hit four. <laughs> well, we can put it all in and start taking them out. Uh, so, those the the things that we've just talked about are relatively big items. The remainder might not actually make that much of a difference. Like Montpelier Live at ten thousand. I'm trying to think what else. What else has? What else Montpelier has? Montpelier Live only has 
three and a half boats. Sorry, which one only has three? Not three. three and a half. Oh, it's three and a half. Okay, yep. Yeah. Oh, so we could. Mm, interesting. That's. Well, do you want to talk so about family care? Because that has four. <laughs> what? Actually, I need to go up there. I have to write on this. <laughs> I'm not sure that this was the best solution here, team. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like your white I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about it. How do you all feel about it? Well, we can talk about that. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> OK, so what have we, what have we talked about? Uh, we need to either mic this or have the camera or something. we got to make this. There you go. I got it. I'm on it. Is it? Yeah, you, you got I'm that? on it. Yep. OK, OK, great. All right, so what have we talked about? We just I just need to like, I need to just mark this off visually. So we've talked about this one, and we've talked about this one, and this one. New parks position, we talked about that. We talked about this. Uh, and we haven't done anything else. Is that is right. my, right. my correct? But I think it's fair to say that full funding is off the table for art synergy because right. almost yeah. every, yeah. Five people said yay to half funding. I'm gonna do this. Uh, actually, I'm just gonna leave it. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, we've. Is that, is that fair team? We're gonna leave that one out? So we've decided something about that. So we get to watch. Bargain. Okay. I missed that one. You said half. Down below. Right. I didn't see it as Glenn, you wait to hear the fourth vote on something and you won't give it unless you get your. Okay, well, the next one that has the next highest amount is the family care. Well, maybe some of those amounts can't be half. Maybe they have to be more adjusted. Um, what if we looked at family care and developed a policy this year and funding next? I would also just point out the city doesn't have paid like parental leave either. So well, you can use vacation. Leave. We can sure use vacation time, but there's no like actual parent leave. So like if you have right. a, no, if right. you have a baby or adopt or you grow your family or you're dealing with caring for a loved one, you have to use your your other time. It's not a like some organizations actually offer like a separate kind of leave. Paid leave, yeah. Paid family leave <coughs> as opposed to using your vacation or sick time. You follow the, the federal guidelines, you just don't pay what it is. Well, we don't pay. She's she's right that we don't you, you use your your leave time. So it's like You're a leave. Like, so if you, oh, it, it, it depends on who. So if you are a woman and you give birth, then you do get disability pay, um, whatever is allowed for that period of time, and then you can supplement that with your leave time if you if you're not if if you're the if you're taking paternal leave or if you have adoptive leave, then you have to use your leave time. Or if you have a sick person, you have you're allowed the 12 weeks, but you, you have to use leave time. And we can we we can use sick time. So you don't lose your job, you just don't pay. Correct. Right. And yeah. and we yeah. allow you to use sick time. And most people have a pretty uh, you know high yeah. sick time. It's but just, it's just it's still, I mean I think no, it's, a, right. it's a broader conversation yep. to me, which is why I didn't put an X on there because it's something I think I had asked about it a while ago. But there have been so many yep. other things. But it's something that a lot of people have approached me about and asked like, does the city offer this? And you know you can like like most other unfortunately employers around you know in, in the united states it's not that's not a separate kind of leave it's just you can use yeah. whatever you've accrued yeah so actually i didn't i'm supportive of this idea i didn't put an x next to it because i was under the impression that um your committee and i'm forgetting the full the mm -hmm. social and economic yes. justice mm -hmm. committee um was uh going to consider what it would take to provide um child care at meetings and I don't know I, have you gotten a chance to discuss that or is that even on your no we're sort of in flux a little bit right now so we're we're trying to navigate um, just a new committee and sort of what that looks like okay yeah. It's actually on the council agenda for next week to talk about right. oh. about the charge. Right. I'll take my ex away from family care. I just I want that to I want to discuss it. I want it to be, I want it to be a bigger conversation with the city though about what what the city is doing like sure. generally with regard to like fostering family growth and development and um, as an employer you know how we can better support that. Isn't that something that comes up 
with, at contract time? For for those employees that that are, are covered contract. by the so bargaining. The right. yeah. yeah, this specific line item I would see applying to members of the public who wanted to come, yeah. or maybe employees in the case if anybody here uh, had children, they would make sure they had them watched while they were spending their time in the meeting late hours with us. So I, I see it as a bit of a pilot, you know. I don't know if I'd be willing to take my ex off it and wait till June 30th, 2020 to actually have anything allotted to this. I think this would be a good trial period. Uh, other cities, you know, if schools are closed in the area, they provide childcare for all their employees during those days. So I think this is, this is pretty modest in comparison to a proposal like that. But I think it sends a message that we actually do support civic engagement and people coming out to these meetings. You can hear the crickets right now. I don't know how many people are watching at home, uh, but maybe it would result in higher turnout. I'm, I'm supportive of it. I just want to have a discussion about what we're actually going to do. And I feel like we haven't thought, we haven't taken the time to develop this a little bit more. Um, so this is, I'm just, I just happened to look up and see what other cities, Pittsburgh actually offers this, but it's offered for a limited number of meetings at up to 20 city-sponsored community meetings per year, such as budget meetings or public hearings. They also offer it in for um, employees, city employees when there are snow days, but so there are templates that mm -hmm. exist. So I, um, oh, maybe I should add it next then. I'm, I misinterpreted. I, I thought you were speaking for council members only. So like if a council member had a child care related mm -hmm. issue, but if it's could apply, everyone, could, everybody. but it could be something you know, for anybody who was attending the meetings. Yes. Sure. Okay. That changes. I would put an X for that. I didn't understand it that way, but I would put an X for that. <laughs> And with a cap at 2000 I mean, it is also just $2,000. $2,000 and, you know, <clears throat> FY 2020s. We have a little time to, to figure out some details before we even start spending. Right. Probably grants that exist somewhere. <laughs> so quick quick. I, I understand, but <laughs> okay, just saying it's not like okay. tomorrow. Um, I want to move to talking about Montpelier Alive. We have three and a half votes. For that, yes. I would want to suggest, and it looks like Donna's done a partial amount for Montpelier Alive. I think they asked for ten thousand. Um, I I thought the request was fairly reasonable, but I want to throw a partial amount on the table there. I I can get behind a partial amount. My understanding it's been level funded for about 20 years, is that That's right, that's right. For almost since its inception. The DID sent me from the changed. The DID changed, and we did bump it up. It was a flat 20, and then <coughs> they went up to 22 to cover <coughs> some costs that essentially we were charging them. So it was sort of a, we'll pay you and you pay us back. But I think it was for that specific purpose, I think it was to pay their parking and their their copier fee or something. And um, it would just make the point, they think they're doing a lot for one staffer who's not working 40 hours a week and getting them those extra hours would make a big difference. Uh, I'm on the board, there's a lot of emails flying back and forth on that board. So, so with Dan having a newborn kid and everything, you know, um, you know he's, he's got a lot of pressures here. Well, you want the full 10. What do you want well, to take five? I guess my, and the only reason that I didn't include that as a priority, it just, I'm feeling a little like there's a lot of overlap between things, and I think Montpelier Alive does the thing that we all want our city to do and to have, but I'm, what I'm struggling with is there are other, other, Entities, other groups, other organizations. I think the council just recently even approved, you know, one group <coughs> forming a 501c3 that does similar things. And so, it just it seems like there are other funding options out there. And I want the city to support Montpelier Alive, but I also feel like the city's putting lots of money in other places that do similar type things. And I feel like Montpelier Alive does it best. And so I would like to fund Montpelier Alive at the fuller rate, but I just feel like there are so many other places that are requesting city funds that are, are kind of, to me, duplicating 
efforts and allocating funds to organizations that do similar things and so I just I don't I don't feel like I know enough about like how all of these other things tie in because Montpelier Alive seems to put on all these other things but then these other organizations are contributing and so if the money's coming from the city like why isn't it all just going to one place from the city why isn't it all going to Montpelier Alive so I, I'll try to answer that. Okay. Uh, Montpelier Live was formed by the city to be, and they are our designated downtown mm -hmm. promotion yes. entity. And so we have, you know, they are the ones who are charged, for example, with managing the downtown improvement district <coughs> funds and those sorts of things and, and put on events. Doesn't mean they're exclusive. If somebody else wants to put down on a downtown event, mm -hmm. then they can, although they usually coordinate with Montpelier Live. And, and they communicate with us. They're, they're basically our, our partner for uh, downtown uh, sustainability. Not just it's not just events. It's a lot of the other things that they do to try to you know they work on uh, things. The, the Montpelier Foundation that you refer to, we have actually never put money into that. They they are formed to get fundraising, and it's specifically for um, bricks and mortar projects. So. For example, the downtown Montpelier Live could go to the foundation to seek funding to build, uh, to put in benches or to, to, to put in a statue or something like that. So they they could work in tandem with one another, but it doesn't mean that they're exclusive. And we have the Montpelier Development Corporation, which is really uh, intended to implement the, the economic development strategic plan. And in fact, when it was set up, um, it was set up that I think five of the board members were appointed by the city council and four by Montpelier Alive. So there would be there would be a coordination between F groups so that there was not a, you know, they weren't stepping on each other's toes. And I think that's worked pretty successfully. And I don't know who else might be in that mix. So I, I mean, I'm not sure, you know, you should pick whatever funding level, but I do think Montpelier Alive has certainly been a worthwhile partner, and you're right, they've been level funded for a, a long time, uh, with the exception of the DID that does give them, but they don't use that, specifically do not use that for any op staff operating costs that all goes to like advertising for downtown or specific, you know, we, we, we get a budget for DID money and approve it each year, and it doesn't include their overhead. Are they not allowed to use DID money appropriately? We've never allowed them. I mean, we, we, the was, council, board, you know. yeah, but they could put it in their budget when they were here before. But I was amazed they had no administrative costs right. attached to DID. Yeah, I think that had been the expectation of at least the, the prior council when DID went in was that it was going to be a direct investment to the downtown since the downtown, you know, the downtown businesses and buildings are taxed that extra money. So it wasn't, you know, we're just going to. I think there was some concern amongst those in the downtown that going to raise the taxes on our buildings and it's just going to pay for you know more city staff uh, even though they're not yeah, really city staff that. but it, so the commitment was it's going to be uh, we will give you a direct budget for how that money is used and we will it'll be a, you know marketing money and that kind of stuff so I'm not saying what's right or wrong I'm trying to explain what happened yeah I'm I'm sort of thinking along the lines of you, like, why not build it? For us, give you extra money to do the DID. Right. <clears throat> I, I think it should be part of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you, because your your version is just a little bit different than mine here. If you add an X to the Montpelier Live line, yeah. Um, I want to just to see if that increases the three point eight. <coughs> I think it's not. Oh, great. <laughs> of course it's great. So, I, so team, I, I'm in a place where, like, there are, how, how should I say this? Uh, when we put all of our X's up there, that's sort of like our initial thoughts, right? And then some things might have got, like, a, a more votes than, <clears throat> or more X's, I should say, um, than perhaps we individually voted for, right? So. Um, I don't know if you have a cap, but I my hope was to keep it below four, around 3.5 was was kind of my goal. Um, and so while I have an X next to Montpelier Alive, I I mean I might just erase it because uh, I, uh, I yeah because that that is also a, a goal that I have. Um, and if that's but knowing that we could build it into 
the ID money. Well, and the other piece is also, like we mentioned earlier, taking those community enhancements funds and giving them to Montpelier Alive and saying, if you think the best use of this is more staff time versus an event or whatever. I mean, <clears throat> Yeah, right. I, I don't know. Is there going to be any uh, regulatory or statutory reason we can't do that? No, I don't think so. But I, <clears throat> you know, they still have to fundraise. I mean, the the, the cost, for example, of July third, I mean, our three thousand dollars or whatever is a you know pittance compared to the money they, they raise. So if they choose to use that for staff, that's three thousand. They've got to raise for that event elsewhere. I don't know about the winter or the whatever they used it for this year. That that was just something that's been in there, and I think they have had a little bit of discretion on how they use that. But, I mean, so. I think I would be more comfortable with doing that. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Okay, so Dan's hours are going up five a week. Um, that doesn't necessarily secure it then. He might have to stay at 30 hours a week, right? I mean, that would be a decision of the board. I don't know how they're planning to finance it. You know, I don't know that, that the 20000 that we give them funds him now, I think. <clears throat> I, uh, but I'm not that familiar with their budget. So how I, I could maybe, I could do five mm -hmm. now and then right. find five from mm -hmm. DID. Would that put five under? Still is 3.9. <laughs> what? So are you talking about budget? When you say 3.9, are you talking about budget or tax rate? She's talking, talking about budget. budget. The, 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 the line okay, right next to Okay, just make sure because they are different numbers. Right. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, right, because we're at 4.1. So the 3.9 <laughs> is we the... Haven't, we haven't taken out... Oh, yeah. 3.9 is the budget. This yeah. is the number yeah. of cents on the tax rate, yeah. and that's the percent of the tax rate. So mm -hmm. we're at so just under four and a half cents and a 4.1% tax increase. So, in, so the way you count it, we are over four. Well, I, I depends. Which number? Those are the. Care about. We are. We're at 3.9, 4.5, or 4.1, depending oh, on which gosh. piece of data you want. So how about 10 at the new? Most people look at the tax rate, though. Now. Where are we looking at the second? The four. Yeah. Uh, you're saying to, to cut our, from 25 to, to 10? 10? Well, maybe I'm... I'll argue that. Yeah. I can also be a place <laughs> <laughs> Right now, so we don't have put that out there. Can we Check. have Art Synergy in there twice, though? Well, there's a there's oh, first half and a second half. They're each 25. They're right. each 25, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> there's no... There's <laughs> no X next to this one. Yeah, okay. So it's only 25 and not... Right. Okay. So this, this is actually the... The column, this one right here, that's being added. Okay. That's the request. Okay. So. So Donna has made a suggestion that we look at reducing art synergy. Because uh, when I said half, I was thinking half of the 25 that was listed there. I was thinking closer to 10, 12. I thought 25 was half of their ask, though, right? I, Is that I, I know, but when I put half, I meant half of the Half 20. of the half. half of I got you. Okay. So you wanted to fund it as like three quarters. Yeah. Or ten, one, one quarter. quarter. I, I, oh, one quarter. Yeah, in, oh, my, in, my, in my pieces, anyway, I just rounded it off to, to 10. Yeah. So half of 20 is 12 and a half. So like 12 and a half? She, she rounded it down I to 10. I just rounded it to 10. 10. Just like month here, like, man, I, I put it in 10. Um, what is the tax rate increase if we're at 10? <laughs> well, as I recall, uh, our, our tax revenue is roughly $10 million. So every 10000 is a tenth of a percent. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's more like about 9. Yeah, nine yeah, almost, yeah. almost 10, yeah. But we can look. So Where are our synergy? So you want to put that at ten thousand? Yeah. You said no. Hire the facilities. Well, she just wanted to see what it was. I, I know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, back to three point eight. Well, and it's and it's less than four. Yep. Um, uh, the Rosa just what if, uh, the facilities director. Part of what I thought. Yeah. And, and you know I 
I did not put an X on starting it right at the beginning of the year, and and part of the reason for that was because of my appetite for other things, yes. but but yes. which we haven't even talked about. Yeah. I just yeah. threw yeah. that yeah. in. Yeah. I'm doing it. I'm doing also, it. Because uh, I did. Well, I tried it. I was just oh, looking. Yeah, to see. That's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jack. I, I think it's uh, a worthy thing to do if if we have the person start on July first. Will the person will the project and the work be sufficiently uh, uh, laid out, fleshed out? Mm -hmm to usefully have the person working full-time starting July 1st, as opposed to, say, January 1st? So uh, I don't know that I can speak terribly specifically to this, but I, Kate and I were talking about this last night, um, and I think and she left to eat dinner. So I'll just say what I think she would say, which is, Yes, if someone starts July 1st, there are projects that they can start working on right away. Um, not least figuring out the 10-year net yeah, zero plan. Mm -hmm. um, and from her point of view and from my point of view, the earlier we really start on that plan, the better. Uh, so I would, I would argue strongly for July 1st. Okay. I was surprised by all the support for the new parks position in addition to the full-time parks position in addition to the new trees position. Um, and in my mind, having a full-time trees position potentially frees up some of the current parks folks to be doing more parks. Like, they, those over the years can be used back and forth as is needed. And I understand the parks director saying that they need more, but the city manager's recommendation was not for that. Um, so I was surprised that there was as much support for the full-time position as, um, as there was. I was also surprised by that. I, um, I think even, um, I guess I would be more interested, I mean, I didn't vote for that at all, but I would be more interested in a, like a part-time uh, position there, see how it goes, and see if that person is, in fact, um, overwhelmed and needs more time, and we can reevaluate that. I would, I would rather take smaller steps in that role. I, I, I see we need somebody for the, just the board, let alone the park needs a full-time person without this emergency, the ASH board, so I disagree. Uh, um, a couple of thoughts I have about that are, one, in part of the discussion, someone, uh, and I don't even remember who it was, said, well, we're not going to have any more total acres of parkland in 10 years. I suggested that that was a possibility. Than we do now. To speculate. But, and and I, I, don't think well, I, people, so. I don't think people on the council mostly want that. I think people, people on the council mostly want to actually have more parkland, uh, but it's not happening in the next year necessarily so uh, I think we can potentially live with uh, not adding that full-time position this year the other part of the other thing that uh, uh, that Jeff said that uh, that I understood what he was saying and I'm not sure everyone else caught was that he uh, he said that they've uh, made I think he said that they made more progress than he thought they might on uh, on hazard trees, and uh, I believe uh, from other things I've heard that that's because the uh, the new tree person they've heard is a hired as a certified arborist with years of experience uh, climbing trees, and so they've been able to do things um, with trees that uh, they haven't been able to in previous years and what they've done what we learned when we did the uh, tour of the uh, Hubbard of the parks and the trees is that a lot of what they've had to do to do uh, hazard trees is to hire a tree service to use a crane to go up and uh, cut down those trees and that's 
they're not limited to only doing that now for some of the trees. So, Jack, did I hear you say that you'd be willing to go with the part time? Yeah, I would. I would go for half instead of full. But Jeff is retiring. He said June two thousand nineteen. Yeah. This June. So he's been doing the job of two people. <laughs> and so his salary is already there. So one full time will just begin to replace him. Yeah. I mean, I'd be interested to see how that plays out. But yeah. Yeah, that's. That but so, well. He certainly, there's no question about Jeff's work ethic, but we don't know how somebody else is going to work or how efficient they're going to work or, or what things they'll get in, involved in or, or not. You, I mean, I, I, you know, as you can see, our, our team supported the tree position and not the not necessarily the, the, the additional parks. Again, feeling it could be stepped up over time. and. So let's see, because they would be going from two to three this year and see how that worked and if that was unnecessary, then going from three to four. But obviously, it's on the list because you all had expressed an interest in it. And um, well, something we're Jeff certainly said, willing to do. I had another question about something Jeff said, where he said that he's got roughly a 1,000 working hours left before his retirement date, and he has booked 960 hours of comp time. Presumably, that might mean that he could work another week and then stay home for the rest of right. his time and draw his pay, which he's not going to do. <laughs> but say he gets, gets to the, uh, his retirement date and he hasn't drawn down any of that right. comp time, does he just lose that? Or uh, does he get paid for it? I don't have the answer to that question. That was a. Typically, uh, in, the, in the department head uh, positions, comp time is not income. Okay. That's what I assume, yeah. And it's usually only Mac capped at 40, which is why. So, but I, I wasn't familiar, you know. But we'll see. I don't know what the arrangements are with him, so. Well, and just in terms of new park development, I, I don't know that we've actually made a plan for the property that we purchased, the, the last remaining structure across the right. way. But if, if we do want to turn that into right. a, a park or, you know, I just, I appreciate that. You know, for for right now, maybe you know, maybe a part time would make sense. And I'm not saying I'm opposed to a part time. If that's sort of where we we settle up, that's where we settle up. But I just want to be mindful that that's going to take a lot of work for, on the city's behalf. If we if the council does decide that that's going to become a thing, plus we've got Confluence Park in the making, which would in theory require city time and. Um, and so I just I want to be mindful that while we, there's, we there's don't no, have that right now, that is something that's sort of in the works. Absolutely, there's no question. We've got we've got Confluence Park and whatever, however big it ends up being, right? Um, <laughs> old something along Old Country Club Road. Um, there's always Sabin's Pasture uh, as a potential future. Something on the other side of the river. You know, it sounds like we're not really going to do the the Stonewall Meadows piece, but. We've talked about something over there or smaller neighborhood works. No doubt that we're, we, we, we would desire to have more parkland, but I, so it's, it's like there's a lot of things that we'd like right. to do, but how, how do we process, you know, how do we, you it's know. Just, I want the council to be aware that if we right. do decide to, to sort of grow those areas, that that's also going to require staff time to get Absolutely. those to yeah. where. Even without growing, it's going to take more than one extra right. person that would they, we now have with the tree person to deal when the ash really get going. Mm -hmm. And they all start getting affected. <coughs> it's going to take a lot of extra time. Um, I want to, so the, the base budget, does that uh, take into account the fact that Jeff is retiring? Yes. Okay. How much did you reduce? Because it, it wasn't. Uh, I, I, I don't want to give you a specific no. amount, but but there I did reduce the the position to what would be considered an entry level department head position rather than a veteran. So I, within the scale, if if it was eighty, I moved it to seventy, or if it was seventy to sixty. Yeah. So it was uh, so that's been within the range of the okay. assuming it would be a new leadership position uh, coming in at the start of the scale. Um, I want to check in about some of the um, other things that we haven't talked about yet. Um, and 
um, knowing that it can all still be in flux. That's okay. Um, so, shall we? I, I think we should probably talk about the first time home buyers program that had three votes. Um, do you, anybody want to make a case for that? I mean, if I have to choose, <laughs> if I have to choose between the two, I would say Christchurch funding because that's focused on affordable like rentals. Um, but I'm also curious, and I, admittedly, I have not. That's not been sort of like where my attention has been focused, but. When would that money be drawn on for the Christ Church? Not for at least three years. Yeah, I, I can yeah, I can talk about this a little bit because I think that calling it Christ Church funding is a bit of a misnomer. Yes. When housing. the housing task force has been coming in with the funding requests, what we've talked about is uh, putting money into a couple of different uh, areas. One is the to keep the first time home buyers program running on a year to year basis and two is to every year make a certain contribution to a fund balance which over a period of two or three or four years would build up enough to be a Montpelier's contribution to an, a multifamily affordable housing project and we're talking at using Christchurch as a shorthand for that, but it could be that that pro project doesn't go forward, or it could be that some other project comes up that really is the one that looks like what we should do. But it's the idea is that if we we gradually add money to that uh, fund, so that uh, each year, so that by the time there's a project ready to uh, to use it there's right. money to put into it, yeah, because, you know, the land trust only has a certain amount of capacity to do projects, so they, even if there were five things that they could do, they couldn't do five new housing projects in one year. And so the, uh, the first time home buyers project, or program, and you know, there's a difference between a program and a project, but the pro, it, I think it has been beneficial in in reaching its goals, which is to uh, enable or facilitate young families to move into the city and uh, likely draw down state uh, education fund money when uh, when those kids wind up in the in the public schools. But uh, it's also hard for that for a program like that to to really work if uh, if they don't know from year to year whether they're going to have a program or not um, so it's just around what, what amount of money do you want to put in housing yeah. pot because they're going to decide and come to us with their recommendations right and the housing task force thought all of yeah. them were Right, and I up, think and I agree. it was complicated this year because we'd made a $75,000 commitment to a housing project already so how you know to do that plus sustain the um the, the first time home buyers and then start putting money away i think the feeling was next year we won't have the seventy five thousand. so if we did the same 150 next year you, you'd have 90 on top of the 60 home first time home buyer you put those two away for two years that's 180 plus this and then you get two hundred thousand dollars in three years that you can invest in another project whether it's christchurch or something else i mean it was the, the thinking made sense, um, so it's just a question of funding it. Oh. Now, the Housing Trust Fund will, at some point, start to get some money back into it from the loans that it has made that are repayable, right? Yeah. Because of the change that was made this year? Yeah. So presumably not for a little while. That's a, a ways out, yeah. you know, but yeah. Because I recall those are repayable upon sale. Yeah. So, you know, certainly we expect and hope people will move here and stay here. But I also know that when I moved to, Mont to Montpelier, I only stayed in my first house for five or six years. So um, the $60,000 also felt like a lot to me. Um, but uh, they're giving out $10,000 increments, is that right? 
Um, I mean, this is this is where I, I mean I uh, I could picture uh, like what if I, I know we were talking about like when does the facilities person start, but like we could be also having that conversation too um, around the um, the parks position. Like, what if the parks position didn't start in July? Uh, I'm not sure if that makes much sense. That was actually one of the things we looked at when we when we. Uh, when we uh, started splitting it up, and we, we thought about well, if we if we split the, the parks position up and didn't have you know this fun, funding year starts in July anyway, mm -hmm. so you get through this summer, see how it all goes, yeah. and then you've got the winter, and then have them start the following spring for the, you know for, or early spring for the next season. Um, but then we've also had a chance to see how it worked without them. Um, so that was what one version of splitting it, but um, we weren't, we didn't settle on that. We were probably, I'd say there was division in the room about that, just whether it should be full-time or part-time or whether it should be div divided yearly. So we just split it up as sort of one or the other uh, without a specific time. So a lower amount is part-time starting later? Could be. Like I said, we didn't actually settle on that. was just one option that was considered. So that is a, that's a possibility, but it's not specifically. We specifically didn't recommend it that way, like we did with the facilities position. But that was one thought. And the same problem with the facilities right. position. Then you're obligating yourself in the future right. to. Keep. Yeah. Um, any thoughts on that, too? I'm trying to I like find. <laughs> like, what if it's not sixty thousand dollars? Like, what if it's some other amount? Um, but then I I would want to. Well, there weren't Trade four for votes for it. Yeah. There were only three for that one. That's Sorry, true. Yeah, heard Which one? Boss oh, the, the, the housing time. Yeah. That's why I thought we were back in front. OK. Well, I, well that's they, they, just We do a, weave a little bit. <laughs> so, yeah, we do. I, I mean, I was trying to see if there could be four for that. But with, I, I, like, I would be willing to you know, put my ex behind that if we were going to reduce something else. I don't know which X you're putting, so state the top. Oh, I'm sorry. I would, I would I'd be willing so to go this, for like. We have numbers here. Is it like the, do you have number suggestions to put well, in Well, sure. So like I, I would suggest maybe um, uh, 20,000 or 30,000 towards the first time home buyers program, but then reducing the parks position by 20 or 30,000, which basically brings it down back to part time. What? Yeah, which I know is not part time related. parks. <coughs> but, uh, yeah. And half of the housing. Yeah, district. right. Yeah, I think that would. Uh, yeah. And you're leaving the, the additional 20 or you're taking the 20 out? So I'm t that's now in the housing. We have 20 under the housing. Yep, now. so leaving that, it is. leaving that 20, but uh, increasing that by another 20 by reducing um, the, the, the uh, parks. Position by 20. So take out. As, I think as Bill does. Yeah. Yeah. So that gives them 50. The other 75. thing is that we've effectively made the decision on art synergy, and I'm not sure that we ever really yeah, that's made fair. that decision. <laughs> that's fair. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I'm fine with it, but I know that. I know you. That wasn't. I think. No, we can put it in there for at least to 25. Oh, we, do you mean about like funding it at 10? 25 wasn't there. It was nothing was listed until my 10 went in. It wasn't in the second column. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. It was on the high. Well, it was. It had enough votes for twenty-five. Oh, yeah. good. <laughs> but now but we're, I lowered it. We're up again. So I just put it back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well. <laughs> Sorry. What are you objecting to, Don? I think we're looking at the second line for each of those. So the full-time parks position got eliminated, but that's the, right. You took thirty-five away, and you but there's still a part-time. So you only get rid of five thousand dollars. Yeah, there's there's uh, right. five thousand dollars. Yeah, so I think it was the Yeah, so I just changed this to to um, thirty here because that triggers the X. I'll, I'll put the original amount over here to make it more obvious that that's what. Yeah, but you got it in two places. Fifty thousand dollars whatever topic they decide. Well, we could so change. Part-time parks would be thirty-five thousand. 
they only had 20 for part-time. The 35 is when it went to full-time, then you added benefits and everything else. So it was, that's why it jumped. It wasn't a 50-50 split. Okay. Um, part-time. But they don't have I will do interest. that, though. I will make a... Uh, interest come. Right. It's if there's an expiry, it's counted part-time. Part-time. No I'm going to um, just put all the housing trust fund in I one know. place. I actually kind of think I'm with Donna on that. I was a part-time employee for the state, and there's no such thing. I mean, I was working 40 hours plus a week and getting paid it's terrible. As, a part -time. At a, as a part-time it's terrible. salary, not hourly, so I know that there's, there's difference, but so, but then, but then maybe nothing towards the first-time homebuyer program, or really, like, additional money to go towards. <laughs> <coughs> we're, I think that's really misleading. Whatever okay. money they get, they're going to decide yeah, which, you know, which is their priority of what comes in. Sure, so it's either 20 or 50. Well, I don't think that's really true because I think that the money for Taylor Street is really committed. Yes, right. we know that. That's up there. That's up there, but yeah. That's the only but, thing uh, that's committed. I mean, that's, and Molly, uh, Molly said the same thing. Yeah. Our own guidelines to them said the same thing. Mm -hmm. We give them a... a money and then they study what's going on in the marketplace and come with their recommendations and then we approve it. Or not. Or yeah. not. Mm -hmm. I so think the confusion in the past has been that the council has done this process and said first time home buyers program. Yes. And then they go through and do their recommendations, and then it's really difficult for the council at that point to change those recommendations because we've already, we've already said this here. So if the appetite from the council is to do to put money aside for a big future project, I think we need to make that clear here. And then if they come to us and say, actually, we think we should do this instead, then the council at that point can make that decision. But I think it's really important during this part of the process to make it clear that this is what we think the priority should be. Because I remember last year trying to make that argument after the fact, and it was yeah. I disagree with you. We just did their bylaw change to make it their recommendation coming to us. So we're front ending it. I don't think we should. We should give them. We may think of it in our minds. We, we want to think of a, this much money so they can do first time and they can do big projects. But I don't think we should. And our, their own governing stuff that we just passed. So I will meet you halfway there and say <laughs> if we struck first time home buyers program from increase housing trust fund and said we're just increasing the housing trust fund by X amount. Yes. That would solve my problem which that would appears my too. that <laughs> Well maybe we should do maybe we should do that. Just put it as like a lump so yeah just yeah. one like, one well, I yes I just I just put them all together yeah in the funding okay so. and I really think that what bill did earlier was a very smart thing to enable people to yeah, on the council to about understand about what connects to what yeah. but uh, right. in but the end. in the end we're just talking about dollars um, and then but then that I mean I will uh, I was only willing to do that if we if it wasn't a full-time parks position but which it's not and it's not. And let me talk about that yeah. full-time versus part-time thing, because someone made the observation that for this uh, coming fiscal year, it could be starting a person on a full-time schedule halfway through the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And so that, that avoids the problem of exploiting a part-time worker. But it doesn't avoid the the conflict next budget season when now we're budgeting. No, that's very no, true. No, that's, that's what you need. Them. Right, I'd be, I'd be okay with it. Well, I know. That's, yeah. There's that's, also the possibility that that person could be a seasonal person, too. Right. Just to keep that in the and we have lots of seasonal mm -hmm. staff, too. I mean, you know, I, we certainly try to be a good employer and do the right thing by our employees, but we also have to be mindful of, you know, we're going to hire someone paying benefits if it's really not what we need to deliver the services that we have. I mean, that's, are we, you know, because there's that too. So it's, yeah. the, um, you know, I mean, I think I'm when. I would push back on the idea that any part-time position is a bad thing. I know people who would like to, who, you know, are taking care of kids or have other commitments or whatever, who would like a part-time position. That's not. 
it's not inherently a, a horrible thing to do as an employer to have a part-time position. Um, I think if it's a part-time position where the scope of work is limited enough that you can do that job part-time, I'm not convinced it is in this, this case. It's yeah. Well, I think if you delay hiring, could be. You got it. Um, <coughs> what are your thoughts on this? I'm just counting noses yeah. right now. Um, I mean, I guess I hear Jeff saying that it's they've been understaffed for a while, and I see that he's retiring, and I know that they have more and more work, and we're adding more parks. So I think we should, Rosie. <laughs> I think though that we have run into um, Jeff selecting priorities that aren't the council's priorities in the past. That's something that this department director does. And I don't necessarily know that a new person would prioritize the same things that this department director has. And so I would be curious to see how that played out. Um, because I do think that there are things that Jeff spends his time on that are wonderful things, but aren't necessarily the priorities of this council. Um, and so I don't, I don't have a great sense of that, but that's my, my feeling. Um, he works for the Parks Commission, unfortunately not us. No, that's not true. That's not. He does answer the questions. Well, he does, but the Parks Commission. I mean, I sit in the right. meetings and they direct his work. Anyway. Um, so my. My hesitation team still is that uh, the tax rate increases over 4%, um, which is not good. Uh, so uh, we still have not yet talked about um, uh, the citizen survey. Uh, and I think we need to probably revisit the art synergy funding. Um, so, but I'm not sure that we really made a decision on this part of it either. Um, so, well, unless, cause, uh, unless uh, you know, there, you're, there are four of you that would like to keep the full-time parks position, but then I'm going to say I, I can't go for um, necessarily adding money to um, beyond the 20000 for housing. Um, and is that, are you okay with that? And that if, if, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> so if you, if you. We now have 50 for housing. What do you want to do? Well, that's only yeah. if it's at. Um, I, I would, I would take. If you if you add the full time position for the parks, then we take the housing back down to twenty. Twenty total. Total. Yep. You're gonna exchange the part time for the full time. Yeah, I would. Right, I would take. I would go for. This might be helpful in your process. Is there is collectively now that you've seen the range that you're talking about is there a number you'd like to hit That's a great question. and then and then work to that have number a number that you have in mind I didn't come into this with a number I had in mind but uh, it where we are right now uh, adds neatly to a $100 tax bill increase for a typical house which and that's without the library or anything else that's on well, there. The library's in there. The library's oh. in there, yeah. Is there any additional? And that doesn't seem like a bad number to me. It feels like a lot. It feels like, it feels a, like lot. a lot. When you, I mean, I guess translating that to rent, and I, I'm, you know, I, I would be probably more fortunate than most, but it just. Yeah. So what would you propose to remove? <laughs> I just want to say, I um, I know that I am probably unusual in the general run of people in this, but that that doesn't really feel like a lot to me. Um, I think that all of the things that we are just just because all of the things that we are doing feel absolutely worthwhile to me. I would much rather spend money on all of these things than tons of things that I end up spending money on as it is now. So, yes, it's huge, but I just... I mean, for at least 
for myself until the relatively recent, I mean, $100 is the difference between like eating for two weeks or not eating. And, and you know, I know that there's, it's expensive to live in Montpelier. And, you know, I, I think Polly sort of hit the, the nail on the head with that things actually haven't really gotten any better in terms of affordable housing. We're working on it, you know, but things are, the demand are gonna keeps going up. get worse before they get better, but I just, a hundred dollars to me is not. Um, other thoughts, um, is this number, do you, would you agree that 4% is too high? What if we did 40,000 for the housing trust fund, the whole housing trust fund? I know that's not the, the same. It's still, there's still two awards that could be apportioned at 10,000 or, you we know. We take some money from the art fund. Four <laughs> at, you can take some housing ticket from the other two. Okay, well, just remember you have 60 already in the base and then the additional 15. So you're starting with 75. Oh, so, so this is on top of that's that. That's on top. Yeah. yeah. And this the really 75 old. can be apportioned. 75, no, However, that's committed. That's committed. That's committed. To okay. So right now it's just so, a question so of. So anything that's 70 from. So at 75, it's essentially zero for anything else for this year. Synergy, so, and they asked for 50. Yep. Yep. So if we did just, into, just, to, just to give you perspective for, you know, I think Jack was good to mention the, the tax bill thing. You know, the, the, before you get into these options, just to give you a perspective, we were at $54 average increase. Yep. So, and that goes to 100. So just people, that's all of this here is an extra $46 on the average tax bill. So, Hmm? Yeah, annual. annual, not yeah. annual. Yeah. annual payment. That's right. Annual. It's your so annual. So $8 a month. Yeah. $20 a quarter. quarter. Right. Eight, eight, eight bucks a month. <laughs> when we talk about this, though, we have to remember that we are, we're talking about folks who are our income status, but we're also talking about folks who are on a fixed income, who are not getting a 4% well, cost of living increase Or if year. they are, it's being eaten up by other things. Um, and, and it's so, on top of $2,500 that they're paying now. So can we, uh, well, how, so actually you put out, what if we- 40 and 20. Some, yeah, 40 and, and 20 for arts. For arts. Can we, how do you feel about those changes, team? I'm okay with the 40, I don't like the 20. <laughs> <laughs> I would go even more in the arts if we needed to. Oh, you mean the You'll cut it more. How do you feel, Rosie? I'm great cutting it. I'm okay with that. Okay, so let's put in 40 and 20. And so where are we at? Uh, Four dollars less. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's three, three point eight nine instead of. When I look at the actual number, it's worth four bucks. <laughs> well, um, we also have not yet talked about the citizen survey. It has three votes. It has three votes. <laughs> Taking away my vote. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I think it, it could have some real value Sorry, to, for us to, to get some information so, about the community. Get Glenn. Yeah, I mean, I just want to note that Bill has refrained so far from from putting an X on the citizen survey up here. So that's not even on our. Because well, you didn't. Because I'm only putting the X's when you. I get it. I think you're right. <laughs> not to do that, but. We have five thousand this year, though. So the plan, my plan, assuming we have the funds to do it this year, is to to fund it this year out of one-time money, so that we actually have the information this year. And then this was to set five thousand dollars a year for the next three years to do it in three years. So, um, but you, depending on the status of our fund balance, that would be something I wouldn't do if we didn't, you know, if, if I didn't feel comfortable with it. But but then it would be putting it off. So, you know, I mean, it's not the end of the world if you, you know, I mean, that, I, I'm not gonna go to the floor for $5,000 for a survey compared to some of the other stuff. I think we ought to do it, but, mm -hmm. you know, we might be able to find it in the budget somewhere too, okay. you know, so I'm not gonna worry about that too much. Um, okay, uh, how are we feeling about 3.89? What, what else would you trade there? If I'm just trying to think back to the conversations they had about art synergy. So, in terms of projects that were on the horizon, and I don't have that stuff in front of me. Well, one, 
there are there are grants available, right? Like in because some of these are brick and mortar type installations, right? Like some of them probably any installation is gonna go after grants and this becomes match money. But we right. are looking at some art for one Taylor Street that we would they would want to do as right. a first that they mentioned they could do as a first project. If there was fun for the garage. For the garage. One Taylor's already done. For the garage. Yes, sorry. Yes, thank you. I would just say that um, I do think that that public art is, as the the plan said, it's it's how we present to the world, um, and that is, and to ourselves, it's how we kind of know who we are, um, and if we want to be seen and known to ourselves as you know, nickel and diamond, <laughs> uh, our, our public face. But I, I think that, that uh, I'm not going to be able to argue this as strongly as I feel. So if we give you, <laughs> you 20, that's the beginning, yes? It's, uh, oh, I would say it's a weak beginning. I'll take it, but yeah. I think we should really do more. Every year, 20. An additional 20 every year. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, they asked for fifty. Yes, yeah. so, which, and I think that honestly, I think that that is a reasonable level yeah. for the kinds of for the kinds of things that we would want. Um, I just want to check in. Or um, maybe I, I thought I heard the answer was no. But are we happy at three point eight nine percent? Or do you want to try to? You want to put the twenty five back? <laughs> I want to go lower, but I also only put one mark on the yeah. end. <laughs> yeah. Well, I marked everything. So. <laughs> <laughs> Rosie and I can just hammer this out. <laughs> um, other, other thoughts, team? I, I would like to go lower as well, but... Um, what did you just take out? What did well, I, I put the 25 in just to see where, yeah. where right. that ended up, but I didn't really have any authority to do that, so... It's $98. <laughs> Yeah. It's worth it. In the twenty, at least it was as a clear half, right? Thank you. Three point nine four. Well, yeah, I 30, thought that. Uh, thirty five. Where where were the numbers if we put the housing trust fund at thirty five? At thirty five. And what if we change the oh. the art back to Wait, twenty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that will be a little bit lower. I've never been able. And then to change the art back no. to. Okay. Oops. Ninety-five instead of ninety-six. Oh, but I don't think that's from that though. Thirty-five. Well, this isn't it on top of. Well, that's so. That's what that was the initial amount that we had for the Christchurch was twenty, and then we had another sixty. 60. So it's 60. it's more than we initially had in there for Christchurch, but it's only ten thousand dollars more. Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. Forty thousand. You could possibly do what for? Well, if you do them at ten thousand dollar, if you do that as as a ten thousand dollar, you know, it's two. You right. Do four new home buyers when it was forty. Right, but it, that's or if you if you funded them at ten thousand dollars. But if you did like seven five, that would give you one x. You know, if, or if you did five thousand or. Right. Yeah, so but the prices of our house. I think they already reduced them to seven thousand five hundred. Okay. That's that's where they're I think at. That's um, right. Yeah. So, okay. so team, I I would okay. to to meet my own goals. Sorry, we're running out of time, and uh, oh yeah. Uh, unless you're okay with going a little bit more, but more uh, uh, I mean, I I would be willing to 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 get this number down a little bit. I'd be willing to say, what if we didn't hire the person, the facilities director in July, but in uh, September? So, like, what if it wasn't a hundred thousand dollars? What if it was? Well, how long will the process take to get the person to get the grant and get the person to, like, I assume we'd have to do an RFP. Uh, when's the planning grant time? Municipal planning uh, grant. Planning for grant applications are due at the usually at the end of September <coughs> or the end of October. They kind of shift 
shuffle them They'll around. Still have the money account. isn't available right. till January. So that then there's an RFP process. So usually you don't have your consultant on board till March. So that might make sense then, though, if if the grant application period closes in September or October, we onboard someone in August, September. That means they're part of. You know, albeit it would be a new person in a new position, but they could be included in that grant writing process. Then, no, if it's closed already, right? Yeah, the grant applications are in in September. I would probably write the grant application. I mean, anyway. it'd be great to have their them their input. available, but well, I can easily not. write a grant application. They're usually pretty open and flexible. Right. So it's not like I've locked into doing a certain thing. It's usually we're going to get a grant for $25,000, $26,000. To do a municipal to energy do plan. An energy okay. plan for the community, and it's kind of broadly laid and so out. That application then would come. We would, you or whomever would work on that this coming September, September. Right, yep. this year. September. So maybe it would, I know it's not ideal to bump it out, but if we bumped it out, it's something where the new person could get familiar with whatever been put together or potentially assist if they might have experience in doing that you know work with Mike to address that then find out what the award is then work to hire the consultant with the you know it just that might be a, a segue into as opposed to the July start and then I mean it would save a little bit and it's yeah um, what if it? What if instead of at seventy five thousand? What if it was uh, uh, like sixty? Well, it's not that much money to live here, though. Well, well no, it no, would be. It would be. Starting, like, start, oh, starting okay. the same. It I would be it. the. Okay. It would just be starting later. So basically, it's twenty five thousand per quarter. So, so one more quarter. So if you. So, so we could go. What if it was fifty thousand? That would be right. That would be that, starting okay. it. Yeah. So because you already got twenty five up above. Looks like sure. Oh, so that might be five bucks. So right. It's really starting out at 100000 and now it's only seventy-five. Mm -hmm. That's I, I feel good about that. More comfortable with that. That's, that's one of the other cuts. Yeah. Um, I could live with that budget. It would just be mindful that it still does have the part-time cut or not. Yes. Well, to twenty-five thousand. The part-time. Okay. Not to zero. Yeah, what about it? I mean, we had the no increase. Said I mean, cut to zero. We did, no. we did, but then they all sort of no, I gave did. it up. <laughs> she did. Well, I told her to cut to zero. <laughs> he wanted his daycare. Oh. <laughs> Don't go after single parents. <laughs> <laughs> right. They were not single parents. Why not? You take that out and you come down at 3.55. Wait, where did you just... I'm just kidding. He took his daycare out. Oh. <laughs> Night care, really. Night care, um, right. Child care is what I call it, actually. We could go back to revisiting that part, or we, are, are we happy, or where? how are we feeling right now, team? <laughs> um, well, I, I feel still like really like the person to have the park to have one full-time position. What would you, you keep saying that you all can? No, I mean I, I'm <laughs> with you. I'm with you. Would you want to increase the budget or give something up? Increase the budget. Yeah, that's where I'm at though. That's what I thought. He asked me. I said, "No, they right. all surrendered." So we got a part time. All right. It, it, it sounded. When the trees start falling, good. then we'll get somebody. Not, not hearing. <laughs> I'm not hearing enough people. Can we just vote on that? Well, well, I, I don't. I, 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 I wanted. I, got the nuts. I, I don't know that we have a clear count. I, right, I'm not that. sure that we do have a clear count. So, if you, uh, so either, uh, would anybody be willing to increase the budget, or cut something else to get a full time park expression? Well, let's see. You if if we oh, hang, on, that uh, hang on, hang on, make it. If we uh, change the parks from full time to, or from part part time to full time, well, that's adding another thirty five thousand. Yeah. What does that do? No, it's just adding bottom? fifteen it's to adding the part time. Part time because no. either no, no it's no, adding it's an additional thirty five. So line says add to part time funding. Oh, okay. <laughs> so so cl add, click yeah. an X on that, and what does that do to the bottom line? Right. What I'm saying was just one full-time position is and well, not that is a full -time. the part-time. 
That is the full time. That is, yeah. yeah. Two part times are one full time. Right. That was what that was intended. That's, oh, that's what that means. Yeah. It's yeah. 55? Right. right. Yeah. So that brings us back to. <coughs> yeah. Do you want to it's right. it's yeah. because they can become benefit eligible once they go yeah. to the full time status. So we have to account for health insurance and right, retirement right. and all those. Mm -hmm. So there's the second half of the part time status is more expensive. But you, but you started with 50 55 for a management level, and this is an entry level. No, this is, this is an entry level. You know, with so benefits. You would, so, Glenn, you would prefer Well, this, this is with benefits. You would benefit. Yeah. And Connor would prefer this budget. Yes. Ashley? I would say no, but I understand how, I understand maths, and so. And Donna? Yes. So you would prefer this budget? Yeah. With, with the with increase up to 3.8%. 3.9. Right. Depending yeah, on which three, number you're nine, looking nine, at, but yeah. Four. <laughs> uh, I think that's four people who want that. Well, can think about it. I mean, we can still change it, I suppose. <laughs> I'm not giving up. So just to be three point five. <laughs> so we'd be adding, just to be clear, what what we're putting in, we'd be adding a new police officer, a n new full-time tree person, a new full-time parks person, some more money into the housing trust funds. We'd be adding a total of, well, let's see, we'd be adding 35, 50 on top of the 75 already committed, so 125,000 to the trust fund, which it, it's only 60 now. Yeah. So I mean, dollar-wise, it's a doubling the housing trust fund. Can I just ask a clarifying question now? So I see the facility director funding, but then I see the new facility director. So we, the base budget, I'll clean this all up once we've decided what we're going to do, but we had put 0.25 of the facility director's start in April. Okay. So now you folks have added an additional 50 to that. So a total of 75 to start it in Soon. October. Okay. Uh, so it's still <coughs> in there. It's not... It's a full-time position, but we're only putting three quarters of it in the budget this year. I'm, I'm willing to be outvoted if that's what people want. I don't want it, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, th I think I'm outvoted. Yeah, I'm voting for stuff that I don't want to. So. Uh. <laughs> well, would you? Uh, is there a change that you would propose? Well, not that would. Fly would be. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to hear it anyway. Just, okay. <coughs> well, I, I would put more money into the housing trust fund, even even still. But but I, I think that this for for uh, for this being published as the council's proposal, keeping in mind that uh, people have two public hearings to come in and make their case that it should be something else, either higher or lower. I'm. Uh, okay with having this be our proposal. And I just want to add that, so I confirm with Bill, this includes the cut to the CIP increase to of only 25000 right. So we're not going to gain anything with that down the road. That's right. We've right. done that. That's right. Unless you take the other twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> Which we don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Ashley, thoughts? No? I have thoughts, but I'm still for still okay. them. And they're steeping. That's, that's okay. We're, we're okay with less than, or, or just under 4%? Is that well, four of you are. Four of you, yeah, four of you. <laughs> <laughs> just want to check in. That's and scroll down a little bit, Bill, please. Oh, sorry, yeah. Nice. Okay. It did look nice, right? <laughs> it so, looked so good. It, yeah. I was so much So it's still under $100. <laughs> I have to go. Yeah. For a typical house, <laughs> or for the median house, right? Well, we can we can start with this as the basis for our discussion next time. Next week. Yep. next week. Next week. Next week, and then for folks of the week. So they're going to ask us to add more to all these things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. Um, okay. So we need a, We don't need a vote right now. Or do we, we, we do because we, we got to have a public yeah, hearing. this is. We yeah, do. so you, you vote to set this as your proposed budget. I move this is not your adopted budget. Do we need to go back to our... No, you can do that right here. Yeah. I move to set this as our proposed budget. I'll second. Uh, further discussion? 
All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Aye. Okay. So we will take this up again next time. All too um, soon. Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, next Wednesday. Okay. And Still, that's just a good way to do it. We're well. going to consider the meeting. Well, because there's no, there was yeah, no, no other business. No, oh, no, other business. no other business. There's no council reports. Right, there's no right. anybody else's reports. So we're going to consider the meeting adjourned.